of summer, and before the ball game, some Blue Jay fathers got to play catch with their children on the field. See, Delamar Edwin and Connor Sean Marco were starting. Chris Joyner, the strength coach, had their kids out there. And they were able to throw out the first pitch. What a special moment for fathers. And then, of course, George Poulos, the trainer, had the pleasure of watching his daughters sing all, both national anthems here this afternoon. What a great job. Uh, Lanny, Evie, and Nikki, great job on Father's Day. What a present. It couldn't be any better for your father. Take a look at the lineups as these two teams play the rubber match of this three-game series. Manny Machado has been red hot, as you heard Kevin Mark on the pregame show. Don't let Manny Machado hurt you. This series, he's five for nine, and he scored four runs. He is a big impact bat. Former Blue Jay Travis Snyder has been swinging the bat well of late over his last five games. He is seven for 18. Snyder had a couple of doubles in his start here in the opener on Friday night. They are set to take on Scott Copeland. It's the first time Copeland will face the Orioles in his career. And Scott Copeland was a former Orioles, a 21st round draft pick of the Orioles back in 2010 out of the Southern Mississippi State. He got as high as A ball, which is Frederick for the Baltimore Orioles before he was signed by the Blue Jays in July of 2012. He's one and one with a 257 earn run average in his first major league action here this season for the Blue Jays. So Copeland is set. Here is Manny Machado swinging a red hot bat. First pitch of the ball game is downstairs for a ball. Machado batting 298 on the season. And they're going to throw out that first ball as the crew chief Dale Scott will save that ball. First pitch of Father's Day here in Toronto. Copeland delivers that fastball strike. You might see the Orioles take a few more pitches early in this ball game to get a sense of what they're dealing with. First time that they're dealing with Scott Copeland. Fly ball to right. Bautista is back just in front of the warning track. Makes the catch. One down. 27 degrees, a bright Sunday afternoon here at Rogers Center. Let's take a look at the defense. Is it Kiel Carelli? Is in left field? Kevin Pilar has played great in center. Bautista's back in right. Donaldson and Reyes, Goins and Smoke around the infield from third to first. Russell Martin behind the plate. 56 start of the season for Martin. A lot of changes for the Blue Jays in left field. They've used eight different left fielders this season for the Jays. This is Carrera getting the start this afternoon. His eighth in left field for the Blue Jays. Jimmy Paredes. Switch hitter. and He can hit, man. We have seen him all season long swing the mat well against the Blue Jays. He jumps on that fastball and hits a one out single. No Adam Jones this afternoon for the, the Baltimore Orioles, but they get Jimmy Paredes, and you're absolutely right. He can hit. He's got a nice short stroke. You can see that fastball doesn't beat him. He lets it get deep and then drills it right back through the middle. So now Chris Parmley. Another newcomer on the Orioles roster. He goes after the first pitch, and it's a bright sunny day. Donaldson battling the sun gets over near the seats and is just beyond his reach. Donaldson doesn't have sunglasses on. We have seen him wear sunglasses a lot. That ball was up into the sun. He was battling it all the way, but it was about a row out of his reach. If he could have got to the seats, he had a long way to come because of the left-handed hitter. If he could have got there and then anchored himself against that wall, he would have made that catch. It's just in the first row, but you can see he's still moving as the ball lands in those auxiliary seats there. Upstairs, a ball and a strike to the left-handed hitter Parmley. Parmley is playing in his sixth game. He got off to a terrific start in his first game. He went four for six in his first game with a pair of home runs for the Orioles. That's a way to make a impression on your new teammates. There goes the runner. The throw from Martin is right on the money. No chance for Paredes as Martin bends down another base run. That's the first time Paredes has been caught this season. Three for three before that. Buck Showalter trying to make something happen here in the first inning, but this is going to be tough to run on Russell Martin. It's almost like a pitch out. Fastball up and away. And for the 18th time this year, Russell Martin guns down a base runner trying to steal. 
There's so much talk always about a catcher's arm strength, but I think the reason Russell is so good at throwing out runners is feet work quickly. He really gets into a throwing position very quickly. Two and two. Upstairs, now it's a full count. Perez caught for the first time, as we mentioned. Boy, that'll snuff out a rally, won't it? Copeland with the strikeout. Russell Martin steps up to help out Scott Copeland through the first inning. John Gibbons, top of the order. Jose Reyes against the starter for the Orioles, Chris Tillman. He's got nine for 26 with four extra base hits. Reyes batting 287 for the season. And then down in the eighth spot, Kevin Pillar's got a five game hit streak, nine for 17 during those five games. He's also batting 391 in the month of June. What a month that has been for Kevin Pillar. They will get the face. Chris Tillman this afternoon making his 14th start of the season, his 18th career start versus the Blue Jays in his career. He's 4 9 with an ERA over 5. He has lost his last five starts to the, to the Blue Jays. He's turning it on at, though, at the right time for the Orioles. He's 3 0 this month. He's averaging six innings pitch per start. He's allowed fewer hits than innings pitched. And the key for him, I think, Buck, is keep the ball in the ballpark. He's only given up one home run. This month. He's not overpowering by any means. He'll pitch in the upper 80s. That's about it. But as we saw with Mark Burley yesterday, it's not all about velocity. It's about location and mixing up your pitches effectively. Change speeds and hit your spots, and he's going to have to do that against the Blue Jays because they are very familiar with him. You mentioned the five game losing streak in his last five starts. His ERA over those five starts, 878. For his career, he is four and nine. This is a pop up. Flaherty battling the sun using that glove, and he gets called off by Chris Parmley. The outfielder took over. Take a look at the rest of the Orioles' defense. They've committed 32 errors, and they've always been a very good fielding ball club. In the outfield, the former Blue Jays' number one pick, Travis Snyder. David Mose in center. Adam Jones still dealing with that shoulder problem. Parmley's in right. Couple of gold glovers on the left side and Machado and Hardy, Flaherty and Davis on the right side, and Matt Weeders back behind the plate. And you talk about gold glovers. Uh, here's one right here at third base, Manny Machado. He won that gold glove in 2013, the first Oriole third baseman since Brooks Robinson in 1975 to win a gold glove. Bouncing ball to Machado. Takes his time. Donaldson's retired. And well, Machado is a terrific defender. He was a natural shortstop. And a couple of years ago, when they were getting ready to bring him to the big leagues, they moved him to third base. And Buck Showalter says, play third base every day. And he did that. 
they actually took him out of a game in the minor leagues to give him some rest. The show Walter looked at the box score called down there and says don't rest Manny Machado. He's taking his own advice. He hasn't missed a game yet. He has started every game for the Orioles this season and that's something that they could, couldn't say over the last two days. They've two years. They've lost a lot of time with the knee injuries that Manny has had over the last two seasons. This is Jose Bautista. Jose knows Tillman well. He's nine for 34. He's got a pair of home runs against the big righty. Tillman's hot streak. Pat mentioned he's won three games in June. It's not a coincidence. He's got his catcher back. Matt Waiters came back on the 5th of June. That was Tillman's first start in this month, and he has won three straight. He's going to need a good Tillman this afternoon against the Blue Jays. They've been swinging a hot bat. They're very familiar with Chris Tillman. He's right over the top. He's going to have to keep the ball down to, to be effective. Well, Bautista's right on top of the plate. It's another high pop. Machado, the third baseman, calls for it. He waits for it, and Tillman has a quick inning. Blue Jays go quietly. It's a scoreless game after one. Honda Civic, Canada's best selling car for 17 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. What's going on here at Rogers Center today? It's Father's Day. It's also coincidentally the first day of summer. So everybody is out in a festive atmosphere and a lot of dads with their children here at Rogers Center today. And we want to send along our best wishes to all you fathers out there. Nothing like spending a day at the ballpark with your kids on a gorgeous Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Matt Weeder is the catcher behind 0 and 2. Scott Copeland uh, has got the stuff, the basic stuff that a pitcher, a starting pitcher has. Fastball, curveball, slider, change up. His fastball's got a nice little sink to it. And there's a slider right there. That's been a much better pitch for him, the fastball command. He's throwing it for a lot more strikes this year. There are his numbers while he was in AAA Buffalo this season. Use the fastball and get a lot of ground ball outs. Change up. Waiter serves it into center. Just stayed on it with two strikes and it's a leadoff single. Second hit of the afternoon for the Orioles. Let's take a little closer look at this afternoon's starter, Scott Copeland. The fastball just touches 90 miles an hour. He's going to have to use that good sinker and move it around the strike zone, slider, change up, curveball. And again, get that swing percentage. I think you got to 
pitch to contact. He can't be walking people because he just doesn't have that stuff that just blows it by you. Gets ahead with that get me over curveball to Chris Davis. Davis 14 homers and 39 RBIs batting just 220. Copeland's had a good start and one that wasn't so good. What was the difference between Copeland against the Marlins and the Mets? His last start at New York versus the Mets. He was only eight, able to go four innings. Here's a slider. He just couldn't command his pitchers. Couldn't throw the fastball where he needed to. In the start against the Marlins, the ball was diving and sinking. He was getting a lot of ground ball outs through seven innings and gave up one earned run against the Marlins. Against the Mets, just couldn't throw the ball where he needed to. And he was only around for four innings, gave up eight hits to the Mets. Inside. Of course, all the people here at Rogers Center, every time a batter in this ball game gets pushed back off the plate, there's a big ooh and an ah because of the history of these two teams. There's a drive into center. That's going to get down. Pilar's going to try to cut it off, and he does. What a good play by Kevin Pilar to take away extra bases from Chris Davis. Weeders on the play goes first to third, but Pilar got to it, and with that effort, keeps the double play in order. That is a long, long single for Chris Davis. They're playing deep anyway. You can see where Pilar is in center field. This ball is hit hard, and it bounces off that turf. He snow cones it and then in one motion is able to get the ball back in quickly to keep him to a single. Watch where this ball hits in his glove right on the webbing right on the edge and he gets it back quickly. He leads the team in outfield assist with five. That time it was just a matter of getting the ball back quickly. It says Travis Snyder. He mentioned his last five games. He's seven for 18. Snyder hit second in the lineup yesterday and ended up with a Three hit afternoon. A couple of those hits went to left field. Just served the ball out into left field. And you can see Carrera now, the left fielder, shading him that way just a little bit more. Not straight up like they were yesterday. Inside, two balls and a strike to Travis Snyder. There's a pop down the left side long run and career is not going to get there. It hits on the warning track and bounces out of play. Well, the Blue Jays and the Orioles they have been swinging the bats very well lately and they both have played well over the last 16 games. The Orioles are 12 and 4. They like the Blue Jays are doing a little bit of everything. Yeah and it's all coming together for Buck Showalter's team and I asked him the first day in here you know what's going on with your team He says we're finally getting healthy. We got our Starting catcher back. There's a base hit to right. Weeders comes in and Bautista tries for the force at second. His arm still not 100% as Snyder knocks in the first run of the ball game, his 18th RBI of the season. They're also getting their shortstop back. Their pitchers are starting to get healthy. So this is a team the Orioles just like last year they, they were kind of right around 500 in June and then right at the end of June they took off and won the division by double digits they won 96 games last season won the double won the division by double digits they were the first American League East team to do that since the Yankees in 2006. There's a pop up right over home plate. Russell Martin shading his eyes with his glove makes the catch in Hardy's retire. That's the first out of the end. He looked right up into the sun. Now, he can't put glasses on, sunglasses with the mask and everything that he has there. So he's got to deal with it the old fashioned way. He's got to use the glove has a shade. You can see him fighting the sun and then it comes out of the sun right at the last minute there where he picked it up. Tough afternoon for pop ups. Now this is Ryan Flaherty. Flaherty having a pivotal bat in the ninth inning. He got hit by a pitch. And that set up the 
catcher Caleb Joseph for that RBI single that started the three run night. That was the big part of the game wasn't it. Left on left left handed pitcher loop versus a left handed batter and he ended up hitting him. Good spot down and away. Oh and two. First two games of this series have been good ball games. Blue Jays won Friday night five to four. The Orioles won five three yesterday afternoon. <laughs> Copeland a little quick coming out of his delivery. That ball got away from him. It fell to off. Come inside. Fell off the mound just a little bit too much there. Instead of staying on top of it, got on the side of that ball. And went around it and just didn't finish it off. That's going to reach the seats down the left side again. The ball slicing away from Carrera. Another good crowd on hand here this afternoon. Why not? It's a beautiful day. Last game yesterday afternoon, 46,018. Same type of crowd this afternoon. Gorgeous afternoon here. Best marketing tool in the world. Win a few games. <laughs> One and two. Fouled off the catcher's glove. Orioles don't do a lot offensively because they don't run. They don't have a lot of great team speed. In the middle of their lineup, Parbley, Weeders, Davis, Snyder, Hardy, Flaherty, they don't even have a stolen base attempt this year. This is a team that sits back and just pounds you offensively. There's a base hit pass goings Bautista get over and cuts it off. Chris Davis is coming around to score Flaherty drives in the second run of the inning. Blue Jays play Ryan Flaherty extreme pull. Their charts and all their information say that he is a strictly pull hitter. Sinker down and away and he's able to pull it. But because the Blue Jays are in that shift area, you can see Ryan Bowen's a second baseman. Extreme shift. If he's playing straight up, that's a double play. But it goes as a another hit for the Orioles, their second run. Fifth hit already this afternoon. Travis Snyder with Bobby Dickerson, the third base coach, Flaherty. His 13th RBI has given the Orioles a 2-0 lead. You get a sense this might be a Donnybrook today. Yeah. High scoring game. Talking to a lot of people around the ballpark this morning. They're saying is this going to be an eight to six, ten to eight type of game because these offenses are so good. Both of them built the same way, built for power. There's another base hit. David Lowe drives in Travis Snyder from third. Flaherty goes first to third in the Orioles. Have jumped all over Scott Copeland here in the second. They are playing first and third baseball here. I think that's the third time already this inning that they had a single to right field where a base runner went first to third. Fastball, you can see where it is. There's the sink, but it's right down the middle. High, high, and, and low has been swinging a hot bat in the number nine hole for the Baltimore Orioles, and they do it again. Singles to right field, knocks in a run, and sends that base runner. That's part of the strategy Buck Showalter utilizes to set up his lineup, putting low in that ninth spot to set up Manny Machado. Now Machado has runners at the corners and one out. You don't have much wiggle room here with Machado. No, and, and you look at him and you say this guy looks more like a number three, four, five hitter, big, strong guy. But they they like his on base percentage, they like his at bats, and he's a good hitter. They don't have one of those Jose Reyes types guys who are legitimate leadoff hitters as Bo Schultz starts to warm up for the Blue Jays. So the next best thing Manny Machado is a great hitter. So they hit him lead off when you think about it. He only leads off once a game. So now he's batting with two runners on. Machado has 36 ribbies so far this season. He had a big hit in yesterday's ball game. Ninth inning. Caleb Joseph had just singled in the tie breaking run and then he had a two run double. 
That really broke the game open. Machado had three hits, including two doubles. There's another base hit for Manny Machado. Flaherty will jog home, and it's a four run inning for the Orioles. What quick decisions right now. They are on Scott Copeland. One, two, three, four, five, six hit this inning already. Sandwiched around a pop up by JJ Hardy. Now you're starting to head into the middle of this lineup. Decisions for John Gibbons. And the Orioles don't have Adam Jones in their lineup today. He's still dealing with that shoulder problem. Jimmy Paredes singled in his first at bat. He's a very aggressive hitter. He likes to jump on pitches early in the at bat. He had a first pitch base hit. Yeah. Runners in scoring position this year, 450. He's one of the highest swing rate hitters in the American League. Goes up there swinging. Bo Schultz appears to be ready down in the bullpen. Take him long to get loose, and he understands the situation. It's a high fly ball to left. That ball is carrying. That ball is going to go out of here. Jimmy Paredes. It's a three run home run. And just like that, it's a seven run inning. Eighth home run of the season for Paredes, and he's got some power. And he shows it off right there. And that's going to be the final pitch that Scott Copeland has this afternoon. He is only able to go an inning and a third and charged with seven runs. Blue Jays got their work cut out for him. Big hole early in the ball game is John Gibbons. He hasn't had to do this much lately to take a starter out early in the ball game. Tough outing for Scott Copeland. They will bat around in the second. So far, seven runs in. Only one out. Bowl Schultz into the game. Find out how call one triple eight Rogers one now hurry offer and soon Buck the Blue Jays are going to have to hope that their offense can ignite something this afternoon now. Well they got their work cut out for them, Mary the Orioles have just had their best inning of the season to date seven runs that's the highest inning they have had so far they've scored six runs three different innings including the first inning in Chris Tillman's last start against Philadelphia and they scored 19 runs in that game Bo Schultz now will come on. He came on the last time Scott Copeland pitched. He was only able to go four innings. Schultz is the long man out of the bullpen through two innings that time. The time before that. On the 12th he threw two and two thirds innings when Drew Hutchison was only able to go two and a third. So the long man out of the pen now in charge of keeping it right there. This is Chris Parmley. He struck out to end the first. Broken bat pop up Donaldson. Makes the catch. 
Rough start for Scott Copeland. He got off to a good start in his first outing against the Marlins, and the last two have been disappointing. Inning in the third, just 42 pitches, and after a three-up, three-down inning in the first, the Orioles came out swinging in the second. No walks and a strikeout. Seven hits and seven runs in the second. This is Matt Weeders. He singled and scored the first Orioles run of the afternoon. Good fastball from Schultz. Two and one. Bo Schultz is 29 years old. The Blue Jays claimed him off waivers last, last October from Arizona. He spent most of the season last year in Triple A Reno. Made 23 starts in Triple A. Almost made this team out of spring training. Had a good spring for the Blue Jays. Throws hard, throw mid 90s. Got a nice little slider, but he gives you innings out of that bullpen, a long man, and that's a guy Blue Jays haven't had to use lately because the starting pitching has been so good. So Weeders takes ball four. Weeders, the tenth man to bat this inning. Chris Davis single. Nice slider right there, right underneath the bat of Chris Davis. All or nothing. Inside. The Orioles and the Blue Jays, we mentioned these are two of the most potent offenses in all of baseball. Now, Blue Jays are going to have to flex their muscles a little bit today to get back in this game. Another good breaking ball. A little at a time. That's what it's probably going to take for the Blue Jays this afternoon. A couple runs here, a couple runs there. Tough to get it all back at one time. So Justin Smoke has moved behind the runner at first. Matt Weeders, he'll be off on this pitch. Back to back walks. Schultz comes in and retires Parmley on the pop out, then walks Weeder and Davis. The Blue Jays have had a terrific start to the month of June. You look at where they are, they are 14 and 4, and they've outscored their opponents by a ton. But now they have a seven run hole to dig their way out of. And they can do it. We've seen them do that before, score 10 runs before, which is a lot to ask for in the major leagues. It's early. But eventually. You got to get that pitching to match up with your offense if you have any thoughts about winning. First and foremost, you have to slow the Orioles down and get out of this inning. Travis Snyder, the 12th Oriole to bat here in the second. Oh, Schultz having a little trouble finding that strike zone. This ball is moving. All over the place, and it's hard. Mid 90s fastball. You can see that second pitch just underneath the strike zone. Boy, there is a lot of great movement on that fastball. 
That one looked shoot like for a, a bigger slider. part of the plate. Yep. 92 miles an hour slider. I mean, it's throwing hard. But you're right. Shoot for the middle and take your chances. Jimmy Paredes with the big blow this inning. A three-run home run off of Scott Copeland. Schultz strikes out Snyder. But the Orioles have a big inning. Their biggest inning so far this season. Capped off by a three-run home run. Jimmy Paredes, his eighth home run of the season. The Orioles with an early lead, 7-0. He has won an autographed Blue Jays jersey just by tweeting a selfie with Dad using the hashtag #CelebrateDad. Send it over to you, Tabby. Hey, Buck. Why don't we have a second here? We're talking about Father's Day. I'd like to wish you a happy Father's <laughs> Day. This is your, you and your son Casey this past week. So, uh, from Casey to you and from us to you, happy Father's Day. Uh, that's awesome. That is a great memory of a fabulous trip we had. Up to Sioux Lookout. Ontario, Casey and I, and went wrong with some pals, Sparky and Troy, and we just had a great trip, and it was great to be with my son and have a little pre Father's Day outing. It That's was right. terrific, and I'll the fishing wasn't bad either. <laughs> <laughs> the smiles on your face told it all, my friend. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you very much. Happy Father's Day to you, my friend. Now, yeah, baseball and Father's Day, well, there's a lot of good memories there. Stays fair, stay fair, but it hooks foul. Just a reminder of how quickly the Blue Jays can get back into this game. Doesn't take long. Two pitches all around the batting cage this morning. That was the talk for the Blue Jays. As you see Encarnacion get out in front just a hair. Deanna Navarro's grand slam yesterday just went foul. And Carrera's ball just went foul. That's how close. It is here, I think, in the American League East. It's razor thin, the difference between a win and a loss. Yeah, this division is tightening up. And early in the season, everybody said, well, it's the American League least. Well, everybody's starting to bunch up. Yankees and the Rays. There's a base hit. Could go all the way to the wall. Snyder will play it off the wall. And Connor Jones headed for second. And he'll get there with a slide. That's his start. A leadoff double here in the second. Well, for him, when it comes out, it's looking like he is starting to get that timing down. Whenever you see him start to rock back just a little bit and load up on that back leg, that's when extra base hits start to come through. Watch him just go down and get that curveball. And hit it hard in the left field. That was a good pitch. Might have been low, but he stayed on it and drives it into left field for the extra base hit. His 12th double of the season. Got to chip away here if you're the Blue Jays. I've been doing this game a long time. I've never seen a seven run homer. <laughs> yeah. Come to think of it, neither have I. No, you got to get singles and extra base hits and put pressure on Chris Tillman. Keep the pressure on him, keep him in his stretch. 
The Blue Jays have done it in the past against Tillman. Remember, Tillman has lost his last five starts at the hands of the Blue Jays. And he's two and five and nine career starts coming into this game this afternoon, right here at Rogers Center. You and I did a game here a couple of years ago when Tillman was pitching. I believe he gave up seven runs early in that game to the Blue Jays. But he hung around and hung around and they eventually pitched long enough that the Orioles came back and won the game. But the point is that the Blue Jays have reached him in the past. And they've reached him for some big numbers. So you just have good at bats. See what happens. And that game was April 23rd. This year that one of the games last year where he gave up six early and just kept plugging away. He didn't come out of the game and he put up enough zeros to allow his teammates to come back. Two balls two strikes to Justin Smoke. And he strikes out. The Blue Jays don't necessarily strike out an awful lot but that was a real big problem in yesterday's game. They had three straight strikeouts in the eighth. Yeah with the bases loaded and nobody out. You know the one thing that the Jays have going for them is they hit a lot of doubles. Encarnacion's doubles the 146 double by the Blue Jays this year which is tops in the American League. You know you keep doing that that's going to drive in a lot of runs. This is Russell Martin takes one inside. The Blue Jays and the Orioles two of the best clutch hitting teams in all of baseball. The Orioles lead the majors batting 305 with runners in scoring position. The Braves are hitting 302. Then the Blue Jays hit an even 300. And that's even with Adam Jones out of the lineup. Two things you need to be good hitters with runners in scoring position. Number one, you have to be a good hitter. I haven't seen a guy who hits 150 all of a sudden be able to turn it up. Number two, I think you have to be tough, mentally tough, to be able to close off all the distractions and all the pressure that comes with hitting with runners in scoring position. You just go up there. And simplify it. Be mentally tough and have good at bats. And you have to remember who's in trouble. It's the pitcher. The pitcher. Pitcher's in trouble. He's trying to get you out. Martin pulls it foul. That's one thing that I've been impressed with with the Blue Jays this year. They've got tough guys. Mentally tough guys who love the limelight. And want to succeed when the game's on the line. Two balls, two strikes to Russell Martin. Up the middle, base hit. They're going to stop in Carnacion. The Blue Jays are down by seven. First and third, one out. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Masahiro Tanaka, of course, had the problems with his elbow. I think that's got to be a daily concern every time he goes to the mound. Anibal Sanchez is starting for the Tigers. And they have broken out the big bats. Victor Martinez back in the lineup already two for yeah. two today with four ribbies. Which Tanaka are you going to get? I think that's yeah. the big question for the Yankees. First in third for Ezequiel Carrera. Carrera getting the start in left field today with Tillman on the mound. Chris Colabello gets the first part of this game off for the time being. Lead off double. You'd love to be able to cash it in here, at least cut into that seven run deficit. Carrera's done a good job of that. This season for the Blue Jays. He's got 24 hits and 12 RBIs. Making it count, he's had a couple of sacrifice flies.
nine of those 24 hits have come with runners in scoring position. That's the situation he's in right now with Encarnacion at third. He put a charge into a ball yesterday that I thought for sure was a home run down the line, but it just scraped foul. He ended up making it out in that game, in that at bat. There's a deep fly ball to right. Snyder with the long run. Parmley is at the track. Goodbye, home run. Chris Parmley watches it sail out of the ballpark, and it's a brand new ball game. Home run number one for Pereira. A three run shot. Don't turn the channel. This one's going to be an interesting one, I think, all afternoon long. Blue Jays, with their great offense, get right back into it with one swing of the bat. And who does it come from? Carrera. Ezekiel Carrera put in the lineup to give Chris Colobello a chance. A day off. One swing, that's three runs. And you don't think that momentum is back in that, that Blue Jay dugout? Third major league home run for Carrera, first of the season. And just like that, Blue Jays are right back in it. Yeah, even if they're down by four runs, you can feel in that dugout after a hit like this, hey, we're back in this game. There's the swing by Carrera, takes it out of here. And now you got to keep the Baltimore Orioles at bay. There's a drive to left field. Get up, get up, gone. Back to back corners. It's been for Kevin Pillar. He does it again this time with his sixth home run, 33rd RBI. Looked like it might have been a changeup from Chris Tillman. Told you he had only given up one home run this month. Tillman's already given up two this afternoon and two innings. Fourth time this season the Blue Jays have got back to back. They've got a lot of thunder in this lineup, and it doesn't make any difference where it is. Here's the changeup. It leaks right to the inner half of the plate, and Pilar smoked that ball. Stay back, keep the hands back, recognize it, get it in the air. The home runs has gotten the crowd right back into this game. Ryan Goins, he has a home run against Tillman. What a month Pilar has put together. He came into this game with the third highest batting average in the month of June in the majors. Bryce Harper and George Springer the only hitters that have hit for a higher average than Pilar. Amazing. Uh, amazing. It's been a very good month for him after a very rough May. 2 and 0. Oh. You know what that speaks to? character. Mm -hmm. Kevin Pilar always has confidence and he had an ugly month. He'll be the first to tell you. He hit 181 in the month of May, but he never lost his confidence and he worked. And he worked. He is out here working with the hitting coaches, trying something. You know, there's another drive to left. Snyder over near the foul line. That's a foul ball just outside the line. One other point about Pilar is he never took his troubles in the batter's box out on the field defensively. Continued to play great defense and it was only a matter of time before the bat started coming back around. This team has changed its personality dramatically this season. And nobody allows you to think about yourself. They stay on each other and they keep motivating each other. Pick you up when you're down. Bring you back down to earth when you get too high. It's a good club. It's a good club. It's a good mix. Goins with a 2 2 count. Russell Martin and Josh Donaldson have brought the pedigree of winning to this ball club. 
And there's a lot of chatter on that bench when these two get there talking about winning. Let's get this guy. We're not out of this game. We can get him. Even when you're down seven to nothing. That curveball in the dirt. It's a full count. You see that all the time in baseball when a team gets down. Yeah, we got another game tomorrow. Let's just pack it in and we'll take our chances tomorrow. Not with this team. No, sir. The other guys aren't going to let you think like that. Base hit for Goins. That's five hits in the inning. Four straight. Just one out. We told you that the Blue Jays are never out of a game, and this is a good indication why they score more runs than anybody in baseball. More than the Yankees, Athletics, Astros, Rangers. Those are some pretty good offensive teams, but the Blue Jays by far have outscored them by 64 runs. The AL average is 289. The Blue Jays almost 100 runs more than that. I don't think anybody's going to steal right now. No. Let the hitters hit. Jose Reyes popped out to the right fielder his first time up. There's a little flare. That's a fair ball down the left field line. Goins is headed for third. Reyes will stop at second. Keep the line moving. Jose Reyes was due for a hit like that. He has been hitting the ball on the button and didn't have a lot to show for it. This whole homestand, so he was due for one of these little Texas leaguer right down the left field line. Harmlessly into foul territory for extra bases. His 12th double of the season. Well, we told you they were, these two teams are pretty potent. How about 13 hits and 11 runs in this inning? <laughs> yeah, this inning. <laughs> That means action. Tommy Hunter, who normally is the eighth inning guy, getting loose, probably thinking about putting an end to this, and Buck Showalter's coming out. That's going to do it. So he's going to use his setup man here in the second to get out of this inning. He's not going to use his long man right now. He wants his best setup man against the middle of the Blue Jays lineup. And Chris Tillman is knocked out at the second inning. Wow. There's a lot of baseball left. 7 4 Orioles. Tommy Hunter into the game to face Josh Donaldson with two on.
The All-Star Game goes July 14th in Cincinnati. You can vote a maximum of 35 times per email address. Get out and vote today, and we will find out the results of this past week on Monday. Buck, and I bet you he's received a lot of votes. Well, I would hope so. The voting ends July 2nd, so make sure you log on and vote for Donaldson and several of the Blue Jays. This is Tommy Hunter, his first pitch outside. Hunter pitched an inning on Friday night. And a very interesting call right here. Buck Showalter is going to go to one of his setup men, Tommy Hunter. You can see what he has done. He's got a good fastball and a good overhand breaking ball. He needs a strikeout. He needs to stop this right here. So he sends out his seventh inning, eighth inning guy to try and squash this rally. It's a second inning. You know, I really like it. And so many managers get trapped in a roll situation. Buck Showalter says the momentum has shifted and I've got to stop it. And I'll sacrifice one of my better relievers early in the game. I would think that the most he could go is this inning and next inning and then I'll sacrifice him for a chance to stop the bleeding right now. Both starters going an inning and a third here this afternoon. Into the bullpens early. Goins at third, Reyes at second. Hard breaking ball. Lots more breaking balls to Donaldson. Fastballs up and breaking balls down. Bautista is on deck. They continue that pattern of working balancing upstairs with the heater. Fastballs up, breaking balls down. Just trying to change his eye level. the series he bats with the bases loaded don't you think he's going to be geared up for the old number one on the first pitch this is going to be power of Tommy Hunter that 97 mile an hour fastball versus the power of Jose Bautista and his ability with one swing put the Blue Jays in the lead Hunter was a starter at one point in his career, so Bautista has plenty of advance against him. He's 7 for 31. First pitch breaking ball and a hard one at 91. Matt Wieters went out there to talk to him and say, hey, let's do this. Let's go first pitch breaking ball. Just get it over. I think Bautista's ready for that fastball, and he got ahead of him. Bases are loaded, one out. Bautista has four career grand slams. The Blue Jays as a team have won this season. How about this inning? The Blue Jays walked off the field at the top of this inning down seven to nothing. And it was pretty bleak. Pretty and quiet. then Encarnacion got the leadoff double. Yeah. Pretty quiet in here. And then one swing of the bat of Pereira. You can feel that momentum change. That's a little looper. That's going to drop. Goins is in the score. Reyes right behind him. It's a one-run game. They were not going to get Jose Reyes on that blooper, but what a job by Reyes to read the ball off the bat of Bautista. He broke immediately, knowing exactly where the right fielder was playing, just how hard Bautista hit that ball. 
And, and they weren't going to get him because of his speed. Bautista got beat by that pitch, but he just bloops it into right field. Goins waits. He sees that it's going to fall. But you can see Reyes right behind him. And Carnes Hume started this inning with the leadoff double. He's the tenth man they hit. That's a foul ball. He talked about Jose Bautista being in the middle of everything. Well, he's in the middle of it again. This time he's going to drive in two with that blooper to right field. A couple more RBIs for Bautista. That gives him 47 on the season. And he's fired up too. How about both clubs with bat around innings here in the second? 7 6 ball game. Popped up. Flaherty backing up. Sunglasses down. Infield fly rule. And Encarnacion is retired. Justin Smoke now steps in with two more to two outs. What an inning for the Blue Jays. No shutdown. No shut. They're not shutting it down. They're going to battle you all the way through. Both of these teams are. A lot at stake. And now Smoke, he can reach the seats. Home run cut. Tommy Hunter jumps ahead. 98 miles an hour with that fastball. For all you folks getting ready for that Father's Day picnic, I know after the top of the inning, you probably turned the TV off. Well, turn it back on. Put the barbecue on a little bit later because we're not done. Yeah. Stay right here. This looks like it's going to be a fun finish. Smoke strikes out, but the Blue Jays put up a big inning in the second. They were down by seven. Ezekiel Herrera hits his first a three run shot, and right behind him, Kevin Pillar goes back to back his sixth of the season, and it's a one run game. Presented by the 2015 Honda Civic, Canada's best-selling car for 17 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. A gorgeous Sunday afternoon, 27 degrees at the start of this game. Things heated up a little bit in that second inning. 13 runs scored by both clubs in the inning. The inning itself took 48 minutes to complete the second inning. J.J. Hardy, the shortstop. 
Hardy popped out to the catcher his first time up. Chris Tillman handed that seven run lead and just could not get out of the inning. Both starters just an inning and a third this afternoon. Bautista in right makes the catch. Hardy's retired. Hey, Bautista, interesting. It's a tough day. Kind of a hazy, bright, sunny day. The outfielders and the infielders are going to have to help out one another. Yeah, if you're an outfielder, you cannot wait for that ball to get up and get behind a cloud. If it gets behind the cloud, you can pick it back up. And they're going to be dealing with it all afternoon long. Brian Flaherty had an RBI single top half of the second. Well, when you mention it, who didn't? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fouls it out of play. Bo Schultz has got good stuff today. He walked a couple in his first inning before he struck out Snyder to end the inning. But he's got a good fastball with pretty good movement. Mid 90s, upper 90s. He's last pitched five days ago, so he is well rested. Reyes on the second base side of the bag makes the throw to us. The question becomes how long can he go? How long can he pick up the starter? His longest outing of his career is four and a third innings. He pitched two and two thirds innings his two two outings ago. David Lowe. Playing in center in place of Adam Jones. Jones still bothered with that right shoulder problem. The Orioles thought Jones would be a matter of days and he'd be back in the lineup, but the shoulder issue is more of a concern. And now, because he's played in the first two games, they can't backdate his injury to Monday when he previously played. If they should think about disabling him. Yeah, that would have been a week right there, but he's played a couple of games in the series, so. They have to deal with that. Well, when Adam Jones is out of the lineup, that's a good thing for the Blue Jays. You see what he has done since 2010. He and his teammate, first baseman Chris Davis, have been a thorn in the Blue Jays' side. 23 home runs for Davis, Jones 22. And then you see the rest of the AL East Thunder, Ortiz, Longoria, Nelson Cruz last year with the Orioles. And if I'm not just foul, if I'm not mistaken, some of those home runs from Adam Jones, big home runs against the Blue Jays late in the ball game to turn games around. Hit a big hit the other night to run single to right field. That ninth inning rally fell a run short as Jones drove in runs number three and four as the Blue Jays won five to four on Friday night. Two balls and two strikes to the number nine hitter. You want to get him out. Manny Machado is next. The Blue Jays can't get him out. He's six for ten in the series. Schultz strikes out both. A three up, three down inning for Bo Schultz. Blue Jays back to work. You're only down by a run.
Jays pay special tribute to the Canadian forces, and today, well, it's Father's Day, so we salute a father and son, Major Jeff Monahan and Master Corporal Chad P.J. Monahan. Major Jeff Monahan deployed to Afghanistan in 2004, and his son Chad deployed to Afghanistan in 2009. And upon his return from tour, he was awarded the Distinguished Queen's Jubilee Medal. Father and son is today's Sunday salute. Buck? What a great opportunity for a couple of fine Canadian military men to share Father's Day here at Rogers Center. Congratulations to both of them. Mark Burley always presents that Sunday salute when he's not pitching. Takes great pride in being able to acknowledge those Canadian Forces service men and women. This is Russell Martin. Russell had a single in that six run second inning. Tommy Hunter. Normally the eighth inning pitcher on with Darren O'Day. He is into the ball game to try to bring some calm to this ball game. And Bautista hit a two run single into right to make it a seven six ball game. He walked Donaldson, then Bautista got that base hit. Uh, his longest outing this year as a reliever is just two innings. So the Blue Jays are making him work. You got to figure that they can do this inning, and that's it. That ball eats up Chris Parmley. Martin is around first. He's headed for second. Russell Martin hammered that ball up and away to right, and it handcuffed the right fielder. You got to make decisions as outfielders here at the Rogers Center quickly. You can't let that ball get too close to you as an outfielder, or it's going to. Bounce away from you. There's just too many crazy hops on this turf. Parmalee gets too close. You can see it ricochets off of his shoulder, bounces away for him, and there's Russell standing at second base. Well, that's how the second inning began with a leadoff double off the bat of Edwin Encarnacion. Martin, his 14th double, starts the third. Ezequiel Carrera hit his first home run of the season last time up. Tries to bunt and bunts it foul. Carrera's done a nice job filling in as an extra outfielder. He has played left center and right. He's made 16 starts in right field when Bautista was out with that bad shoulder serving as the DH. And here he chases that high fastball. One out. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Bryce Harper with two RBIs has driven in 57 runs so far. They got a scare the other night when he injured his hamstring on an awkward throw from right field, but he back in the lineup very quickly. Max Scherzer pitching the no hitter yesterday afternoon missed a perfect game by a hit batter with two yeah. strikes and two outs in the ninth. Crazy. And then he looked like a a Sunday after the game with chocolate syrup all over him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand that one. No. And he's the one that started the tradition for the Nationals of covering the hero of a game with chocolate syrup. <laughs> a Scherzer Sunday. Oh, and two to Kevin Pilar. He went back to back with Carrera in that second inning. Home run number six for Kevin. He's hit. Russell Martin's coming around third. He's going to be waved home. Here's the throw from low. It is not in time. It gets away from Matt Wieters. Kevin Pillar, an RBI single, has tied it up. Good read by Russell Martin to tie the game up with. First of all, a good piece of hitting by Pilar. A pitch down and away. He didn't try and do too much with it. You mentioned the hot June that he's had. Well, he keeps it up. Homer's his first time up, and now watch how he goes down and gets this pitch. Breaking ball down and away. 
and makes contact, solid contact into right field. Martin scores. Kevin Pillar has 27 hits in the month of June. Josh Donaldson led the Blue Jays with 29 in April. Colabello had 35 in May. Pillar has 27. Goins pops it up down the left field line. Manny Machado makes a nice over the shoulder catch in foul ground. We highlighted him on the defense today because of plays like that. What a wonderful play by Machado. A long way to go. He was the only one I think who was going to catch that pop up. No chance for Hardy, no chance for Snyder, but the gold glover records the second out. Seven to seven. Bottom of the third inning, back to the top of the order. Reyes doubled and scored in the second. Bounces it towards second. Flaherty has it. The inning is over. But the Blue Jays with a run, an RBI single by Kevin Pillar. His second ribby of the afternoon has tied it up at seven. giveaway as Rogers Ignite celebrates Father's Day. Congratulations to David. He has won an autographed Blue Jays jersey just by tweeting a selfie with Dad. Here he is at Rogers Center. He used the hashtag Celebrate Dad. We'll have more prizes as the afternoon goes on. Huh? Great afternoon for fathers and their children here at Rogers Center. A lot of dads with the kids here enjoying a great afternoon and what a ball game. What a start to this ball game. In the second inning both teams Scoring six or more runs. That's the first time that's happened since June 19, 2008, which both teams have scored six or more runs in the same inning. That was the Pirates and the White Sox. They both scored six or more runs in the second inning of that ball game, June 19, 2008. Manny Machado, he got into the act in the second. Good day to be a hitter. And here's another one right here. Manny Machado just keeps getting hotter and hotter as the weather starts to warm up. And on the first day of summer, Manny Machado's at 364 this month. Machado is just 22 years old. He turned 23 on the 6th of July. He was the third overall pick in 2010. Off the end of the bat. Reyes backhands and loads up uh, after a throw on the money. Machado's retired. Five straight retired by Bo Schultz. 
One thing that has been characteristic of this month of June, Blue Jays have gone 14 and 4. Everybody's made a contribution. Bo Schultz getting his opportunity here this afternoon. Scott Copeland won his first game when he started two starts ago. We've seen Carrera with a big hit today. Colabello's had a great part of this start in the month of June. The bullpen has gotten into the act. The starters, uh, guys who are normally on the bench, they come off and get big hits or make great plays defensively. And that's what it takes. You want to win over 162 games, your core guys are going to carry you. But you've got to get contributions from everybody and have big seasons from guys you weren't really expecting to have big seasons from. Marco Estrada has four wins in gym. Jose Bautista has 17 RBIs in June. Just two behind the leaders, Albert Pujols and Giancarlo Stanton for the Major League League. And Bautista has done it very quietly. He's back to driving in big runs. Coming up in big situations and getting big hits for the Blue Jays. Those are your core guys. They have to do it for you. That's what they're getting paid for. But it takes all 25. Well, good slider. Right inside a strike to ball slider. Russell Martin got ahead of himself. He That's said that feels two. like strike three and three outs. <laughs> good slider against a good hitter. Paredes has already singled. He's hit a three run home run and now Schultz slider right underneath the bat. It's foul tipped and he held on to it. Thinks that's three outs. It's only two. Look at Bo says come on back. We got one more out to get. And I feel good. <laughs> Boy, it happens to the best of them. You get all pumped up about a ball game and you lose count of how many outs there are. He's all excited. He wants to go and hit again. <laughs> Chris Parmalee has gone over for two. Is that a fine for oh, Kangaroo yeah. Court? Oh, a big fine. Yeah. <laughs> Way to go, Russell. We're going to give him three outs today. It happens to everybody. That, that, you're absolutely right. It happened to me. It happened. To, I'm sure it happened to you. Yeah. I had Kurt Bavaco at the plate one day in Milwaukee, and pitcher threw the ball back to the screen, and I reached for the umpire to give me another ball. It was ball four. <laughs> <laughs> it happened to me one time in uh, Burke Isle, and I came in, and he gave me three pebbles. And I said, what are the three pebbles for? He said, put them in your back pocket. Every time there's an out, when your pants pocket's <laughs> empty, you can come back in. <laughs> I never forgot that yeah. sage advice. Barley reaches for that and stays alive. Gets a piece of it. Yeah, bye, Evan. He wouldn't let you forget a mistake, no, would he? No, the 0 3 rock trick. Yeah. <laughs> so when your your pocket's empty, you can come you can back in and hit. Other than that, stay on the field. One ball, two strikes, two outs. This is a high pop. Donaldson backpedaling. Reyes calls him off, and Reyes makes the catch. Russell Martin, three rocks. You can leave now. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Russell Martin has to laugh at himself.
down in the Rogers Center, and those fans in those big, comfy green chairs are enjoying it. They are in the comfort zone, guests of TD. And if you've been watching at home today and you're thinking, I want to come see a few of these Blue Jays games this year, why not get a flex pack? Pick your game, seats, and save money. The deadline to purchase the 2015 flex pack, though, is Friday, June 26th. So go online, BlueJays.com, and get your flex pack now. Buck? Well, there are going to be a lot of games like this for the rest of the season. You can bet there are going to be some exciting afternoons and evenings here at Rogers Center. So make sure you log on to BlueJays.com and check out the flex pack. Great way to spend time with your family right here at Rogers Center. New pitcher into the ball game for the Orioles is the right-handed Brad Brock. Tough on the lefties. We saw Brock pitch in yesterday's ball game. Just an inning as he picked up Kevin Gosman. It took him five pitchers to get through yesterday's ball game. Center field, David Lowe got a good break, but it's over his head. Bounces off the wall. Donaldson will jog in the second. Three straight innings, the Blue Jays have had a leadoff double. Second inning, Encarnacion came around to score. Russell Martin double last inning. He came around to score, score and now Donaldson smokes this fastball. Low ball hitter. He drills at the center, creates a lot of backspin. Watch the center fielder, David Lowe, think this is a sinking liner. He takes one half a step in, and by that time, he's beat. Falls over his head for extra bases. Fourth double of the afternoon for the Blue Jays. They continue to expand their lead in the majors with doubles. Jays have 49 doubles, 149 doubles for the season now. Jose Bautista, a two run single in the second. High and deep to center field. This one's going to go. Get out of here, home run. Jose Bautista, a four RBI afternoon, has joined the leaders in RBIs in the month of June. He's tied Pujols and Stanton for the Major League League. How about that for Father's Day? That fan catches that ball. Jose, heating up, baby. Encarnacion rips it into center. Low dives and makes the grab. Third home run of the afternoon. Bautista home run number 14. Trying to slip that fastball by him. Low fastball and Jose I told you he's heating up. He had a single his last time up and this is a deep drive to center field. Watch how quick that back comes through on that fastball. Deepest part of the ballpark and it lands right in the lap of a youngster. Right there. Who gets it on Father's Day. Blue Jays nine runs on 11 hits and they've pounded out three homers. It's the fourth inning. Blue Jays are working their third time through the lineup. Brock. That was the fourth home run Brad Brock has given up this season. Pulls it to the right side. Brian Flaherty throws him out. One, two down now. Take a look at the dugout and the reaction right of the screen. Munenori Kawasaki's enjoying it and he's not even involved. <laughs> he, he's practicing his, his uh, handshake. Getting warmed up for yeah. the celebration in the dugout. Yeah, when Bautista finally gets around there, he's practicing his high fives and his, his motion. 
And he gets fired up over the, the, the most interesting things right there if you're around him every day. He got fired up today during batting practice. He was hitting the ball a long way, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Russell Martin's two for two. He scored two runs. This offense for the Blue Jays will make you shake your head. And it doesn't make any difference where they are in the lineup. Everybody can contribute to a crooked number in an inning. Donaldson's been on base twice. Reyes has an RBI and scored a run. Bautista is having a big day. Two for three with four ribbies and a homer. Now we said that last week. We said if Bautista and Encarnacion, the big muscle guys in the lineup for the Blue Jays, if they start hitting, watch the offense go to another height, another plateau. They really haven't started hitting. No. Not like we have seen them in the past. And mm -hmm. Bautista, of course, he's getting close, and so is Edwin. Edwin had a big leadoff double in the second to start the rally, start to come back. They were down seven nothing at one point, and Encarnacion got the double. Carrera is on deck. He's hit his first home run of the season. A three-run homer. Drove in the first three runs for the Blue Jays. Three two. Pull foul. This is a big ball game for both of these teams. The Orioles will go to Boston after this game. The Blue Jays are going down to Tampa Bay and they have not fared well against the Rays. No. They're one and six against Tampa Bay. They have had their success this year against this tough Orioles team. Martin said he went and Dale Scott says no you swung Russell Martin wants the umpire to ask for help and they're still drawing and Dale Scott the home plate umpire called Russell for the swing now John Gibbons coming out just to make sure that Russell doesn't get tossed checked his swing says appeal Dale Scott calls him for the swing and now the manager is out to talk to Dale Scott Blue Jays have taken the lead Jose Bautista a two run home run now time for a Blue Jays central update here's Jamie Campbell and Kevin Barker. When you add internet to select Rogers Ignite Bundles. Find out how. Call 1 888 Rogers 1 now. Hurry. Offer ends soon. Buck, did I not tell you the Blue Jays' offense was going to start igniting? And they sure did. Boy, they sure did, Barry. Good job by you to get an assist on that. The Blue Jays have a 9 7 lead now. 
the Blue Jays will go deeper into their bullpen. Phil Coke, who was acquired by the Blue Jays on May 31st, he signed as a free agent after the Cubs released him on the 25th of May. For the season, 18 games for Coke. Last time he worked, you have to go back a week. That was in Boston. He pitched two innings in that Red Sox series. Fastball, breaking ball from Phil Coke. And today, Buck, it looks like one of those Johnny Holstaff types of things. You just try and march guys out there, keep the lead now, march them out there and work your way towards the back end of this ball game. Jose Bautista is without question the leader in the outfield. He's moving the defense around a bit. He's the veteran. He's a terrific outfielder. Even considering the fact that his arm isn't 100 percent. He's an asset when he plays in right. I think the Blue Jays have lost. Three maybe four games since he's been put back in the lineup. In the outfield. And that's what he has meant to this team. They had that 11 game win streak right when he got back. In the lineup. Well there are certain people that have to be on the field and I think Bautista is one of them. He's one of the best right fielders in the game. He injured his arm April 21st. But when you have Donaldson at third Martin behind the plate Bautista. In right. Your team is whole. Those are your core guys that we talked about. We talked about them having to be in there offensively, defensively, too. They can play both sides of the ball. Matt Wieters with a full count. Pops this one out of play over the screen. Off his foot, leaders hit that ball right off the top of his foot. He mentioned Bautista when he returned to the outfield. That was on the 2nd of June in Washington. The team has since gone 14 and 4. So his presence is very important to have him in the outfield. Plus, it gives John Gibbons the ability to put in Carnison in the DH spot. Justin Smokes the best first baseman they have and he's played a lot more recently and just a better team defensively. With Jose in the outfit I know he can't throw like he did before he injured his shoulder but just his presence he's made a couple of outstanding catches. Already since being back in that lineup the one that comes to the mind was in Boston. Blue Jays don't win that game in Boston unless he makes that catch off of Rusny Castillo. Robs him of a home run in front of the bullpens. Blue Jays came back and won that game. Coke strikes out Waiters first out of the fifth. Well, the Blue Jays and the Orioles have been hot lately, and a big part of that has been the way the starters have pitched. Well, today was the exception. Both starters bumped early. Chris Tillman lasted just an inning and a third, and he was staked to a seven-nothing lead. Scott Copeland had a easy first inning but ran into trouble in the second as they scored seven runs on seven hits in that second inning. And now some deep bullpens are going to try and finish this one off. Blue Jays carry eight relievers. And so do the Baltimore Orioles. Since the Orioles have been here in Toronto they've added two relievers. Today they added Oliver Drake and yesterday they added Michael Gibbons. So Buck Showalter is doing a lot of manipulating. Kevin Gosman, the starter who pitched five innings yesterday, got shipped back to the minors. There's a deep drive to center field, and Chris Davis has hit another home run here at Rogers Center. Chris Davis is dangerous when he stays in the big part of the field, and he goes deep off Phil Coke. It is a one-run game once again. You know, and 
you can match power with Chris Davis, but if you're going to match that power and you're going to throw that hard, I think you got to pitch him inside. You got to really try and crowd him. You start getting that ball out over the middle of the plate where he can extend those big arms and these types of results are going to happen right here. It's that uppercut swing. You can see him just lift that ball out of this ballpark. His 11th home run here at Rogers Center, his 24th career home run against the Blue Jays. It's 9-8 Jays. That's just since 2010. Now Chris Davis with 24 home runs against the Blue Jays. He can pull it out of the ballpark. We've seen him go to left field that time dead center. There's a line drive to left. Carrera backs up a couple steps. Travis Snyder's retired. Overall, that is the 27th home run Davis has hit against the Blue Jays. And now J.J. Hardy, a right-handed batter, was making his way to the plate. And John Gibbons has come out of Blue Jays dugout. So the matchups will continue here. Phil Coke faces two. Faces three batters, gives up a home run to Chris Davis. He'll turn things over to the right hander, Liam Hendricks, coming into the game. Afternoon here at Rogers Center and a lot going on. Blue Jays will go a little bit deeper into their bullpen. Liam Hendricks comes out of the bullpen. He's the third reliever to work for the Jays. Last time that Liam worked three days ago, he came out of the bullpen through an inning and two thirds. So we might have to have the same type of thing. Get through this inning and then one more for Hendricks as they try to put this one together. Hendricks, good fastball and a good breaking ball this year. You know, if he's going to do that, you see him yell at himself right there after that front side opened up just a little bit. If he's going to do that, he's going to have to make quick work. He's going to have to go quickly, throw a lot of strikes, and induce contact. There's some contact. Donaldson backs up, takes his time, throws it in the dirt. He gets away from smoke. Donaldson bounced the ball, handcuffed the first baseman, Justin Smoke. That'll be the Tenth air for Donaldson, the throwing air, just a short hop to the first baseman, and Smoke couldn't dig it out of the dirt. It's on the side of that one, and that ball goes straight down. And you can see it's in between, it's right on that seam. And as a first baseman, you don't know if that ball is going to stay down or it's going to come up. It hits the seam and comes up, and Smoke cannot pick it, so the inning continues. Two down. Ryan Flaherty. He goes after the first pitch. 
you saw smoke go after that ball very aggressively he just tried to scoop it but went after it he said it's something Ron Washington taught him when they were together in Texas he said Washington would literally hit him fungos from all different angles across the infield to practice that last play other than actual throws that's the best simulation of a throw coming over a, a coach will get the fungo and he'll try and simulate the short hop throw he'll create backspin and then bounce it to you Oh, and two. Liam Hendricks on in relief of Phil Coke. It's a 9 8 ball game. Chris Davis with the home run to center field. Came with one out this inning. Home run number 15 for Davis. So fly ball to left. Carrera over near the foul line. Gets there and the inning is over. Hendricks gets out of it after the air by Mounts and no damage done. But Davis's home run has made it a one run game once again. Car 17 years in a row, and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. We're going to make it plural. How about drives of the game as the Blue Jays go back to back in the second inning? Ezekiel Carrero with his first of the season. A couple pitches later, change up to Kevin Pillar. He blasts his sixth home run. It's the fourth time this year the Blue Jays have gone back to back the drives of the game this afternoon. Both teams are deep into their bullpens. Brad Brock is the third pitcher to work for the Orioles. Gilman started. Tommy Hunter worked an inning and two thirds. Now Brad Brock in his second inning. Little tapper out in front of home. Weeder spins and fires offline. Carrera will reach with the infield hit. Leadoff men four straight innings now for the Blue Jays have reached base. Keep bringing them around right there. Carrera right off the end of the bat and it's not hit hard enough for Brock to feel it. That would have been the easier play with Old Glover. Weeders comes up but when he starts to spin around. Loses sight of the first baseman he pulls Davis off. The bag and Carrera slides with the hit. 12 hits now for the Blue Jays. Nine runs on 12 hits. They've pounded out three home runs. The Orioles have hit two home runs. This is kind of what we expected today. Donnie Brook. 
Kevin Pillar has had a perfect day at the plate. Two for two. Looked like he was flinching over there at first base. Career can run a little bit. He's two for two in stolen bases this year, and he's had a very big lead over there at first base. Looked like the Orioles thought maybe something was on. Well, there is a big hole on the right side of the infield if the Blue Jays want to play hit and run. Pilar can handle the bat a bit. He can take a shot at that right side of the infield, play first and third with the hit and run. It's already two for two. He can handle that bat. Not running here. You remember that when the Blue Jays got to Washington, they took Kevin Pillar out for extra batting practice and they eliminated his leg kick. They tried to calm that leg down. Eric Owens and Brooke Jacoby, the two hitting coaches, and Eric Owens was adamant you can't hit with your foot in the air, and he wasn't getting his foot down. So let's try to eliminate it, uh, slow that pitch down. He was telling me a story. He was facing Scherzer that day when he was starting to learn that. And Scherzer threw a 93 mile an hour fastball, and he thought it was a changeup. I mean, that's how much the game slowed down for him when he eliminated that leg kick. He hit a home run off Scherzer. So now Ryan Goins will step in. There's nobody out. Runners at first and second, and this screams for a sacrifice bunt. Goins has five sacrifice bunts this season. You got the right situation. As you see Matt Wieters. He's going to go through the defensive signs right here to give them what they're going to do. You got speed on the bases. You got your number nine hitter now. Louis Rivera is going to come down and talk to Ryan Goins just to make sure everybody knows what they're doing. It screams sacrifice bunt. But if they're going to play this shallow and they're going to cheat this much, you don't want to bunt into an out. You might even bunt into a double play. That's right. So they might take it off and let them swing away. You can see J.J. Hardy, the shortstop. This looks like the wheel play. Machado way in at third. Butcher boy. Popped up. Long run for Machado. He gets there and makes the catch. So the Blue Jays took the bunt off and Goins pops out. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Wade Miley pitching for the Red Sox. Chris Young for Kansas City. And the Red Sox got another blow last night. Pablo Sandoval left the ball game with an ankle injury. He is not in the lineup this afternoon. Kansas City, boy, they're playing great baseball. Had a big game yesterday. Blue Jays will see them right before the All Star break. That should be a fun series. Jose Reyes. Take the ball two from Brad Rock. Good that boy Reyes is swinging the bat well. He's one for three this afternoon and throughout this entire homestand, he's been on pitch after pitch. He's hit him hard. And at times nothing to show for it. It's a 2 0 fastball right there. Last time up, uh, grounded out before that, he dumped a double to left field. On 
Wednesday, Reyes lined out to the shortstop, hit another ball hard. He was lined out several times during this homestand. Ball in the dirt. Full count, one out. Josh Donaldson is on deck. Been that kind of day for the skippers. <laughs> Trying to figure out you're, you're looking an inning or two ahead here. Okay, how am I going to get these guys out? What matchups do I want? Reyes drives this one deep into center field. Low is on the run. He makes the catch. Pereira went too far. He can't advance. As Low got a good break on it, Pereira went halfway instead of going to tag at second. That play. Routinely calls for the runner at second to tag. If the ball gets over the center fielder's head, he's going to score easily. Yeah, it's a tough play. You got to know the, who your outfield is. You got to know the situation. You went a little bit too far, so he cannot advance. Ball just hung up there, just a little bit too long for Reyes, and that will send Brad Brock to the bench. His afternoon is done. This is the third time that Josh Donaldson has taken. New pitchers come in while he has come up. It'll be Chaz Rowe to face Donaldson. Kevin Pilar giving him some information. us that we should vote for Josh Donaldson, Jose Bautista, Edwin Encarnacion, and of course Russell Martin to be all-stars. July 14th, get out to BlueJays.com, vote up to 35 times per email address. Buck? Thank you, Barry. Two outs, first and second, Donaldson facing Chaz Rowe. Rowe's got a good arm. He's been a nice pickup for the Orioles. He certainly has 12 games for the Orioles. 2-0 with a 106 earned run average. Right-handers have had their problems with him. You can see 176 because he's got a good breaking ball. We saw that in yesterday's ball game. And I'm sure Josh Donaldson's going to get a share of breaking balls. Got a fastball. He foul tips into the glove of the catcher. Rowe came into the ball game in the sixth inning yesterday. Got two quick outs and then Russell Martin doubled. He walked the honor Navarro with a base open and struck out Kevin Pilar. 0 oh 2. Ground ball. Clarity will step on the bag and the Blue Jays strand a pair. They leave two on base. We head to the six and here comes the home hardware cleanup crew. Brought to you by Mitsura. Home Hardware's exclusive line of safe, environmentally friendly cleaning products.
We say congratulations to Rick, who's won an autographed Blue Jays jersey. Just by tweeting a selfie with Dad and a dog, of course, using the hashtag CelebrateDad. Buck? Great Father's Day, and the Blue Jays' fathers had a special treat, and Steve Delabar received the first pitch from his daughter, and how about this shot? What a beautiful day for a father to welcome his young daughter into his arms on the field here at Rogers Center. That's a great shot. Father and daughter enjoying a special moment on Father's Day. Liam Hendricks delivers a first pitch strike to David Lowe, the number nine hitter. There's a fly ball into center. Pilar back. Ball's really carrying today. And that carries Pilar right to the warning track in center. We noticed that early on in this game today that the ball is carrying. So as an outfitter, I think you need to take two, maybe three steps back. Because fly ball is what looked like an easy fly ball. You see Pilar momentarily was crossed up on that one. He had to hustle back there to make the catch. Liam Hendricks is from Australia and his father had a big part of his sports interests early on. His father Jeff was a Aussie rules football player and still coaches and scouts Aussie rules football. And Liam actually as a kid enjoyed playing Aussie rules football more than he enjoyed playing baseball. Very popular game in Australia and they're are two factions in Australia. One's the rugby side of mm -hmm. things, and the other is Aussie rules football. Both rough. <laughs> so he must be a tough guy if if he enjoyed that better than baseball. But Hendricks always has a chance to speak to his father from Australia. Jeff and Liam's mom, Deborah, stay in touch with phone calls, and then when Liam returns to Australia in the off season, of course, they catch up. But Liam wanted to talk about his dad on this Father's Day. The 2015 Honda Civic is Canada's best selling car for 17 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. So you see the ribbon on the chest of Liam Hendricks. That's a blue ribbon that represents the prostate cancer awareness that Major League Baseball does every Father's Day. The blue ribbons, the blue wristbands, they will all be part of the raising awareness of prostate cancer. Major League Baseball has done a great job both on Mother's Day and Father's Day of acknowledging the great efforts, and it's also. Acknowledged on the basis June 21st 2015 the first day of summer happened to be Father's Day. Longest day of the year. So we can stay here all day if you want to play <laughs> as long as the Blue Jays win this one. Blue Jays will go down to St. Petersburg after this game. It'll be a short three game series Monday night Tuesday night Wednesday afternoon. Machado can run at first. He bluffs a break and has to slide back in. Russell Martin threw out Jimmy Paredes in the first inning. First time Paredes has been caught this season. He was perfect three for three. There aren't many base stealing threats in this lineup, but Manny Machado is the best. Yeah, 11 for 12. Paredes can run a little bit. He's already been caught. You're right, but that's it for the Baltimore Orioles when it comes to stealing a base. They don't play a lot of hit and run. They don't bunt a lot. They just get up there and they swing the bat. Kind of like an Earl Weaver Orioles team. Certainly is. You saw Paredes has already had a three run home run. Oh, that was close. Smoke with a quick tag slapped the hand of Manny Machado. And they're going to take a look at that in the Blue Jays dugout. Watch him lean just a little bit. And a quick snap throw. And Looked like he might have tagged him right on top of his hand. As a base runner, that's what you want to do. You want to stay low. You want to step in a dive to get back to that outside part of the bag. 
Well, Blue Jays are going to look at this one. They're going to challenge the call on the field. The call was that Machado was safe at first. Dale Scott is the crew chief. He'll go over and put the headset on in communication with New York. Lance Barrett, the first base umpire, made the call. All great base stealers go for that outside corner of the bag. And that's what Machado did. Watch where his hand goes. Textbook. You can see him going out to the outside part of the bag. See if the bag moves a little bit when his hand gets on there. I don't think there's enough there. Pretty close, but it looked like he was back ahead of the tag. First time he tagged, it looked like he hit him right on top of the hand with that quick tag. I don't think it got any other part of his arm, his elbow, or anything like that before it got to the bag. So the Blue Jays are going to challenge this one. I would be surprised if this is overturned. I just don't think there's enough to overturn the ruling on the field. But that's the beauty of instant replay. You can have a look at it. It's obviously a pivotal play. Manny Machado represents the tying run at first. Yeah, anytime you can eliminate a base runner or take a run off the board, you got a challenge. But they got to go ahead to, to take a look at it from inside, and New York's taking a look at it. I don't know. Don't know if there's enough there. Yeah, Scott just waving safe. The call on the field is upheld. So Machado stays at first. Jimmy Paredes, the DH, is behind 0 and 2. There goes Machado, and the ball is hit on the ground. Goins dives, but it's past him. Machado goes to third. So they started the runner, and Goins didn't get his normal good break on contact and it was past him surprised a little bit that they started the runner oh and two you can see just that small hesitation from Ryan Goins like he couldn't pick the baseball up or he was thinking about that runner got a bad break on that ball Fred it squeezes it through the right side for his third hit and the Orioles are in business again. That's and the up. parade from the bullpen will continue. Yeah. Liam Hendricks is out of the game. Aaron Loop into the game. Chris Parmley, a left-handed hitter, is the batter. Runners at the corners. One out. Loop into the game. Managers matching wits. Aaron Loop into the game to face Chris Parmley. Loop's 32nd appearance of the season. But now Buck Showalter has called Parmley back and Loop will face Delman Young. 
That's the strategy right there. How are we going to match up? Aaron pitched in yesterday's ball game and was actually the loser. In that game when he gave up three runs in just two thirds of an inning he will face Delman Young the pinch hitter. For the Orioles. Blue Jays haven't turned to double play yet this afternoon. Outside 2 and 0. Oh. Reyes and Goins have been terrific in their ability to turn to. Inside, not close, it's 3 and 0. Oh. And that's tough to do to Delman Young. He loves to swing it. He is a free swinger. He goes up there, especially with runners in scoring position. You got a runner on third base and less than two outs. They might give him the green light right here. Nope. I may have given him the green light there. He's yeah. a veteran enough hitter to make sure he gets a good pitch. Now it's three and one. Off speed pitch. He was fooled. Manny Machado is at third base. Jimmy Paredes is at first. Delman Young off the bench to pinch hit for Chris Parmley. Bouncing ball. Reyes at short. Goins at second. Back to first. Double play. Luke gets the double play off the mound of Delman Young. That's the 58th double play the Blue Jays have turned. And it couldn't come at a better time. Runners at the corners, a one run game. Good execution around the bag in second. Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. Great afternoon of baseball. The Blue Jays have a 9 8 lead as we head to the bottom of the six and another terrific crowd 46,000 and 92. You look at yesterday and today back to back sellout crowds the third sellout crowd of the season for the Blue Jays winning brings them out. Yeah. And a lot to cheer about today. A lot of fun to have at the ballpark. Bautista is giving them something to cheer about. Delman Young pinch hitter stays in the game in right field. He pinch hit for Chris Parmelin. Jose Bautista's had a big day a four RBI day. This is the first day of summer and boy what a great way to celebrate the West Jet fan flight deck is packed with Blue Jay fans. Hard breaking ball in there for a strike. How fun is it to come to the ballpark on a day like today. It's a gorgeous day. You got a great team like the Jays entertaining games come down here and have a lot of fun.
Two and two to Bautista. We mentioned Jose with four ribbies today has joined Albert Pujols and Giancarlo Stanton of the Marlins for the most ribbies in the month of June at 19. He's put together a heck of a month. It certainly has. Coinciding with getting back out on the field. Playing some defense and it just helped your offense. Jose has hit seven home runs this month. And he'll take a walk. Chaz Rowe wouldn't give in to him, throws him a slider and walks the leadoff man. Five straight innings the Blue Jays have had the leadoff man aboard. Edwin Encarnacion stepped to the plate in the bottom of the second. The Blue Jays were down seven to nothing, and he hit a leadoff double. That started the whole afternoon offensively for the Jays. Tried to check his swing and fouls it off. He got that double. He came around to score after a single by Martin and the big home run by Carrera. Tried to check his swing on that fastball. A little tardy. Rowe will challenge you with a fastball, but he's got a wipeout breaking ball against the right handed batters. Sunday afternoon. Ball in the strike. Blue Jays have hit three home runs. Carrera and Pilar went back to back in the second. Bautista had a two run shot in the fourth. Ooh, there was a home run cut right there from. Encarnacion, that fastball 93, it's got some good movement to it. Gonna be tough to get the ball in the air. You can see Edwin, he doesn't get cheated. Edwin started his day in grand fashion on this Father's Day. He caught a first pitch from his son as well. Son's a lefty. See him? That was pretty cool. Outside, he laid off that breaking ball. Took 48 minutes for these two teams to complete the second inning. The Orioles scored seven runs on seven hits, and the Blue Jays scored six runs on seven hits in a 48 minute inning. Kind of like we expected. Bouncing ball towards short. Hardy will go across the diamond and throw out Encarnacion. One down. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. That's the first three home run game by a Tiger since Miguel Cabrera did it in Texas a couple of seasons ago. It's a big day for the hitting Martinez's in New York. Victor Martinez has had a four RBI day. J.D. Martinez six. There's a break for third and Bautista is thrown out. He thought he had a good enough jump to sneak one past Matt Wieters, but Wieters made a quick throw and guns down Bautista. Second time that Jose has been caught this season. Watch him bounce around at second base, takes off, but Wieters just comes out firing. And he throws a strike to Machado to get Bautista at third base. Trying to get the third base with less than two outs. And he is tagged out. 
Two down now for Justin Smoke. Two and one. Smoke has gone over three this afternoon. Smoke is the only starter in this game that hasn't gotten a hit for the Blue Jays. Everyone else has a hit and has scored a run. Interesting attack today. Up and down the order, of course, the Blue Jays sent 11 men to the plate in the second inning. Right now, you got the lead. You just want to keep adding on. Smoke will strike out for a third time as the Blue Jays are done in the sixth. We go to the seventh. A one run game. Nine eight Jays. Final giveaway today, Rogers Ignite celebrating Father's Day. And we say congratulations to Whitney. She's won an autographed Blue Jays jersey just by tweeting a selfie with Dad in front of the CN Tower. She used the hashtag CelebrateDad. Congratulations, Whitney, and to all of our winners this weekend. What? what a great way to celebrate Father's Day, and that was a terrific picture. Father's Day, number one Blue Jays at Sportnet. Well, Father's Day brings a lot of great memories for all of us, but one of the finest moments and most emotional moments on Father's Day occurred a few years ago with John McDonald. Who could forget this hit right here from Johnny Mack, who had just lost his father a couple of days earlier, and on Father's Day, after his father told him, hit me a home run, son, on Father's Day, he did. It was an incredible and an emotional afternoon for the Blue Jays. Johnny Mack just couldn't pull back the tears. It was a marvelous moment for him to be able to hit that home run after having that conversation with his father as he was speaking to him for the last time. I tell you, they were flowing. They were flowing up here in the broadcast booth yeah. too, man. Tough. What a great day. Great moment. Great memory for John McDonald. Matt Waiters is a catcher with a 1 1 count. Waiters is a switch hitter. Batting right handed. He faced Phil Coke and struck out in the fifth as a right handed man. Blue Jays are carrying three left handed relievers. And against the Baltimore Orioles, you're glad they do. In the middle of this lineup, Davis and Snyder, Parmley, who started the game, lefties, as you make your way through here, every time you turn over this lineup, you need those left handers to get the matchup that you want. 
So Lupe's going to face Weeders, Davis, Snyder. And then they will probably go back to the bullpen there to try to get Hardy. That's how you try to put it together to finish off this game. Yeah, and managers and pitching coaches are an inning or two ahead all the time thinking about, okay, if the score's here, we get down to this guy. we got to have Nellabar ready for J.J. Hardy. Fooled him. One-handed grounder to third. Donaldson throws out Wheaters. The 2015 Honda Civic is Canada's best-selling car for 17 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. There is Steve Delabar loosening up. Chris Davis, the left-hander, went deep his last time up in the fifth. You know, if you're John Gibbons, you'd like to see Steve Delabar start next inning. Both of these managers lost their starter early, both of them in the second inning. And the last thing they want to see right now is what? Extra innings. <laughs> they might not have the pitching to get through extra innings. Buck Showalter has two fresh arms. And you can see here are the conversations. Okay, here's where we are in their lineup, and here's who they'll pinch hit. We got to make sure we have this guy ready. The Marlo Hale, the lieutenant for the manager. John Gibbons. They don't have the Baltimore Orioles any lefties on their bench. Jones, Reimold, Young, Pierce, and Joseph are all right handed batters. So that comes into play also. Chris Davis has unusual splits, and in general, you say, okay, lefty on lefty, I'll pitch to Chris Davis with Luke. But he's hit 286 against lefty pitching. Compared to 197 against righties. He likes the ball out over the plate, yeah. which you're going to get from a left handed pitcher, and he can't handle that ball that gets crowded inside from the righties. And he homered off of a lefty early on. It's his fourth home run against lefty pitching. Here he gets caught looking at strike three. That's a big strikeout. Fastball that time at the top of the strike zone. And Dale Scott, the home plate umpire, will punch him out. Then get through Snyder right here, and then Delabar can start next inning if he choose. And here's another lefty hitter that hits better against lefty pitching than he does against righties. 310 average against lefties. Mind you, he's just 9 for 29. He's hit 258 against right handed pitching in 124 at bats. When I managed, I had to deal with Edgar Martinez, and his splits were exactly the same. He didn't hit left handers well. Great DH, and I was always threatening to bring in a left hander to pitch to him, but I never had the opportunity or the backbone to do it. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. <laughs> the backbone. <laughs> yeah. Everybody goes by percentages, but the percentages suggest you were better off bringing in a lefty to pitch to Edgar Martinez. Why didn't you just one time? Yeah. Just try it one time. It would have freaked Edgar out. Wouldn't that's it? why I'm sitting up here. <laughs> and that's why Edgar's back in the game, right? Edgar took over as the hitting coach for the Mariners yesterday. And they responded very well. They have really had trouble scoring runs. And he is back in the dugout as the hitting coach for the Seattle Mariners. Two and two. And now it's a full count. J.J. Hardy is on deck. Steve Delabar in the Blue Jays bullpen is ready. There's a base hit to center. And that ball spins past Pilar. Going to go all the way to the wall. Snyder will round second. He's headed for third. Goins will run the ball back in. That ball took a wicked hop. It was hit off the end of the bat. Had a lot of spin on it, and Pilar got over to make a play, and it kicked right past him. Never even got a glove on the ball. Second triple of the season for Travis Snyder. What a series that he has had. 
Snyder a couple hits today. Had three hits in the game three yesterday. Hits yesterday. And that will send Aaron Loop out of this game and bring in Steve Delabar. So stay tuned. Steve Delabar to face J.J. Hardy. The tying runs at third with two outs. In and avoid a fielder and watch this ball off the end of the bat of Travis Snyder. You can see that ball slicing back out towards Kevin Pilar, and Pilar has no chance to get that one as it skips by him. He's played great center field this year. He's only had one error, had no chance on that one. Steve Delabar pumps one past JJ Hardy. Delabar's done a terrific job. He's retired all first batters he's faced this season. Throwing the ball like he did a couple of seasons ago when he was an all star getting on top of that fastball just a little bit more and he got it under control. Last year. The ball just was not able to get it down in the strike zone. Base hit Snyder will come in from third J.J. Hardy has tied it up. J.J. Hardy with his first hit of the series. Drives in Travis Snyder. The ball bounced away from Pilar, went all the way to the wall for a two out triple, and Hardy cashes him in. Yeah, unfortunate for the Blue Jays. What looked like it was going to be just a single, a two out single to center field. Snyder ends up on third with a triple, and Hardy cashes him in with a clutch hit. We are all even. Nine runs on 12 hits for both of these teams. They are evenly matched for sure. The distinct edge in my mind goes to the Orioles bullpen. And we have seen them shut down the Blue Jays late in games. Travis Snyder with that fluky triple to center off the end of the bat, but he hustled all the way around to get to third base for J.J. Hardy. There's a deep drive to center field. Pilar is back at the wall. He gets there and makes the catch. Oh, he saves another run. J.J. Hardy was already at third base with two outs. Ryan Flaherty put a charge in it. Kevin Pilar, as he's done all season long, crashes into the wall in center to take extra bases away from the Orioles and keep it a tie game. Terrific defense by Pilar.
made many highlight plays in left field, and he's taken his act to center. Look where he is starting at Steve Delbar versus Flaherty. So he's shading him to left center field. Now he's fearless. He tracks the ball. He knows he is going to run into that ball, and he's going to have to hit that ball hard, but relentlessly he goes after that ball. Very determined in center field to make the catch. See, he's talking about that ball that skipped past him off the bat of Snyder. He couldn't believe it had that much spin on it. And it was working its way away from him. It went all the way to the wall. That allowed the Orioles to tie it up. Brian Mattis, the lefty, is into the game. Martin tried to push it up the first baseline and fouled it back. And some more base runners, and they will get the fourth reliever of the afternoon for the Baltimore Orioles. This Brian Mattis, one and two, 291 earn run average, and not only one earned run over his last eight outings. It's a team, the Baltimore Orioles, their relief pitching, they've got the third best relief pitching in the American League. He's got a good fastball and a good overhand curveball that he'll get a lot of the strikeouts with. Former starter. Former number one pick of the Orioles began his career as a starter. He has found a home in their bullpen for sure. That breaking ball finds the inside corner. Blue Jays have done a great job getting their leadoff man on. We are in the seventh and they have had their leadoff man on in the last five straight innings. Russell Martin himself has gotten on. Back in the third to start that rally. Martin scored the tying run at 7 all. There it is. That good overhand breaking ball for the first out. The 2015 Honda Civic is Canada's best selling car for 17 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. As a Kiev Carrera, the left fielder bunts it over the screen out of play. Carrera's had two hits, including his first home run of the season. Breaking ball stayed upstairs. It's a 9 9 game. Once again, the team so evenly matched, the line scores are identical. Nine runs, 12 hits. The only difference the Blue Jays have committed one error. They both stranded five. That uh, was a lot like yesterday's game. We saw the same type of line score between these two teams. I think that's how evenly matched they are. Ferreira strikes out. Two strikeouts for Mattis. Smoke struck out the end of the six. That's three straight strikeouts for the Orioles. Reliever four. This time he does it with a fastball. Foul tipped by Career right into the glove of the gold glover. Weeders. This is what Mattis has been doing, and it started last year for him. Over his final 27 appearances. Last year's ERA was 1.2. And he has kept it going this year. You remember going back to spring training. There was a lot of talk that the Orioles were going to move Brian Mattis. He's pretty valuable. Yeah, a left-hander who throws hard and could pitch late into a ball game. Look out! That bat flies into the stands. An off-speed pitch from Pilar. Flung it all the way past Louis Rivera, the third base coach, into the third row of seats. It's a nice Father's Day present. Yeah, there you go. Game used bat. Off speed pitch and Pilar. We saw this uh, the other day from Kevin. A little bat flip. Pilar 
That's a mighty hack in thousand back. It's one and two now. Kevin homered in the second. Single then drove in a run in the third. His RBI in the third tied the game at seven all. And then he walked with a man at first in the fifth. Popped up. Weeders out from behind home plate makes a nice play running away from home. Quick inning for Brian Mattis will go to the eighth. It's nine nine. When they take on the Rangers at 107 p.m., it's Blue Jays White Panel Hat Day presented by Jack Links. The first 20,000 fans will receive a Blue Jays White Panel Hat. Go to BlueJays.com for tickets. Buck, as nice as those blue jerseys look today, can you imagine how great they'd look here on Sunday with that White Panel Hat? Too? That's a good-looking hat, and you know what that hat is really good for? Getting autographs. You can sign it right on that white panel. It really stands up. So that'll be a nice giveaway next weekend when the Rangers are in town. David Lowe, the center fielder, has gone one for three in an RBI single in the second inning. He'll drop a bunt down every now and then, so you got to be wary of that. Pops this one up. Donaldson, the third baseman, backing up. Reyes is there, and they collide, but Donaldson makes the catch. Only because he was taller. You can see Josh has got the old fashioned sunglasses down, the flip glasses. Reyes is ready to call him off, and then Donaldson can reach. He's got a little bit more of a reach, pulls it in. And there's some communication going on between the left side. Well, that's not good. Reyes was, the shortstop obviously has priority in those situations, mm -hmm. and it's always been the case in baseball. He calls for it generally, the third baseman will pull off. Focus is on Manny Machado right now. Machado's had a heck of a series. Average at 298. One and two Delabars ahead. A high pop over near the seats. Carrera will run out of room. Manny Machado has 14 home runs. He has always been a threat. You take a look at the pattern, it seems as though he's much better up in the zone than down. Pretty definite where you 
don't want to pitch and that is up all those red dots you can see above that line in the strike zone. That's where he has hit the home runs where the pitch has come from so keep the ball down and good things are going to happen for you. Delabar is trying to use his slider right now and use his splitter to get the outs against Machado. That was a high one right yeah, there. He had a good cut out. He now, missed his spot. He could get that fastball down and away or throw him that splitter. That strike the ball splitter that will get a swing. Took a shot at that outside corner. You can tell Machado's really seeing the ball. I mean, he's had extended at bats. This is now going to be the eighth pitch of this at bat against a tough right hander. There's the splitter. Delabar off the mound, barehanded, and oh, what a play by Smoke. Delabar slipped as Smoke tags Machado diving back into the bag, but I don't think he made a move towards second. Now, Gibbons is going to come out and talk to the umpire at first. But Delabar slipped when he went to make that throw, and he threw it offline. Watch the pitcher's reaction. He gets off in good shape. Catches the ball, plants the right foot, slipped just a little bit, and then that threw him off line. And you can see Justin Smoke makes a heck of a play and then keeps his eye on Manny Machado. Look at him. He takes a look at him right there and then thinks that he might have made a move towards second base. Yeah, they're going to review this and watch Manny Machado's body right there. You could interpret that as a move toward second. And then when Machado dives back in, it shows me that he thought he made a move towards second. That's why he dove back in. Now, Buck is saying, wait a minute now. What are we doing here? Gibbons challenged earlier on a play that was overturned. And Buck has come out to question what the basis of this review is. And he's not pleased with the umpires going to review. Well, he's saying, I think if, if you don't think he made a move to second base, it's the tag at first base doesn't mean anything. So I think they're reviewing this, the umpires, just to see if he made a move. An interesting play, and the game has been full of interesting <laughs> plays. The ball that bounced past Kevin Pilar in center. And here's a look at the great effort by Smoke to save the ball from going down the right field line. Machado appeared to make a step towards second, which would mean he's in play. Well, he makes he, he's safe as it throws off. And can you interpret that that that's a move to to second base? I think if he made a right-handed turn instead of a left-handed turn to go back to the base, he would have been fine. Yeah, Scott has his decision from New York. They wave Machado safe, and he was safe on the tag anyway. It looked like he beat back in there. So Manny Machado's aboard. Now you got to think about Machado trying to steal a base. Well, he's had an impactful series. He walked in the sixth of strength. Be careful early at the count against this guy right here, Paredes. First pitch swinging and lifts a high pop. Donaldson gives chase, but it's just out of play, about four rows back. Darren O'Day, who pitched out of a bases loaded, nobody out situation in the eighth yesterday afternoon. Appears to be standing by ready down in the Orioles bullpen. Nine nine ball game. Last time this situation happened right here with Machado at first base and Paredes at the plate. Machado took off. And Paredes was able to pull a ball into right field for a base hit. That squibbed off the end of the bat. That'll go foul. It was an 0-2 count. 
And I think the runner. Got Ryan Goins. It, it, it froze just for a second and he could not come up with a base hit by Paredes. So we might see Buck Showalter roll the dice once again. Yeah, that was a good point because he did start the runner Machado and Goins didn't have his normal reaction to the ground ball and got past him. He started him with two strikes, gambling that they would throw a breaking ball. And he sent the runners two strikes again. Paredes just barely gets out of the way of that inside pitch. Now it's two and two. I reach back for a little something extra. Almost hit him. Now Showalter's waiting on whether or not that might have been a hit by pitch. Did it hit his blouse? Did it hit the uniform top? Dale Scott waiting on the decision of the Oriole manager whether or not she asked for the video review. He says, yes, I want to have a look at it. So they will review whether or not Paredes was hit by the pitch. Thought I saw the. It looked like the jersey moved, yeah. Just a little bit as he tried to back away from that. The jersey hung out there and it might have just clipped it. And I got to tell did, you, it looked like Paredes thought he was hit. Yeah. <laughs> Just the way he was like, reacting to the ball so far inside. But if he did get hit, he only got brushed into Jersey. But Buck Showalter thinks it's worth the gamble. Watch his uniform. Start to pull out of there. Doesn't appear to have any contact. In a tight ball game, you take a shot. If he reaches, obviously, then the go ahead run would be in second. Yeah, and he's got two strikes on him. So that would bail him out. So we'll see. The umpires aren't going to call it here. They've, called, they've already called it on the field. This is up to New York right here to determine if that pitch from Steve Delabar, that riding fastball up and in, got a piece of that jersey. And the at bat will continue. Paredes not hit by the pitch. So it's two and two. This is really a running opportunity for the Orioles. Well, you got to believe he's going to set them in motion right here. Start that runner. Stay out of the double play. If he hits an extra base hit, he's going to score. Machado at first. Delabar will chase him back. Delman Young is on deck. He pinch hit in the sixth inning. He grounded into a inning ending double play against Luke. Machado not running. Perez strikes out. Two down is check in with Jamie Campbell. Tampa Bay had a big three run home run yesterday from Evan Longoria that they couldn't muster anything today. They got a great start from Alex Kuhlman who went seven innings allowed just one hit. Cody Anderson for the Indians went seven and two thirds of scoreless ball. Delman Young. 0 for 1 this afternoon. This is a fly ball to left. Carrera gets over, cuts it off, and the inning is over. The Orioles will strand a base runner. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. It's a 9 9 game. Now, time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Kevin Parker.
10th annual Lady J's Food Drive. It's in support of Food Banks Canada. It goes the weekend of June 26th through the 28th when the Blue Jays host the Rangers. During that series, bring your non-perishable food items and cash donations to gates 3, 5, 10, and 13. Grab bags will be available for a monetary donation. Go to BlueJays.com for tickets, but the Lady Jays always do a fantastic job raising money and food, of course. They sure do. They get involved, and it's a very good effort. They've been doing it for a long time, and then a lot of fans will come out and support that Lady Jays food drive. Here is Deanna Navarro coming off the bench. He's going to pinch hit for Ryan Goins here in the eighth. Left-hander out on the mound. You set up a switch hitter. And Navarro 0 for 3 as a pinch hitter this season. Navarro in the game yesterday just missed a grand slam in the eighth inning. He hit a ball deep to right that just hooked foul. It was close enough that the Blue Jays asked for a review, but it was foul. Clearly foul. And he got all of it. And now he's got a chance to get something started here again for the Blue Jays in the eighth inning. He has had four career hits against Mattis. Well, that's a tough strike. Navarro had a good look at it. It looked like it was out of the strike zone, but the call goes against him. Inning yesterday, where the Blue Jays loaded up the bases but couldn't score. Ball four. Another leadoff man reaches. And here comes Munanori Kawasaki, will come on as a pinch runner. Navarro does his job. Saki fan favorite now represents the go ahead run. So Jose Reyes will step in. Reyes has gone one for four. Shows button pulls the bat back. Boy, Manny Machado is right in on Reyes from third base. Hard charging from third base. He was anticipating that. Look where he is starting with Reyes. Certainly wants to take the bunt away in Reyes's mind. Give him one shot. He butts it, and it's a good one. Weeders out from behind home, throws Reyes out. Kawasaki is advanced to second. The 2015 Honda Civic is Canada's best-selling car for 17 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Well, Buck Showalter has really used his bullpen this afternoon. Brian Mattis does a good job as he goes an inning in the third. Now Darren O'Day, who pitched out of the bases loaded jam yesterday on the face Donaldson.
today back to back singles then a walk loaded the bases but he pitched out of it striking out the side. Couple of bloopers from Bautista and Carnation and then a walk but then he dug in. Struck out Martin. Navarro and Pilar what he'll like to do again there are his numbers sterling numbers six to one strike out the walk ratio what he likes to do he'll throw that breaking ball but when he throws his fastball and he needs a strikeout with two strikes he'll like to elevate that fastball. Josh Donaldson. One for three Kawasaki at second. Donaldson asking Dale Scott if it was a swinging strike. Bautista on deck, and the drama continues. Well, look how they bunch the outfield here against Josh Donaldson. Everything in the middle of the diamond with Darren O'Day. That is a strange outfield alignment, isn't it? They are really bunched up. There's room down both foul lines. Anything over the third baseman or the first baseman's extra bases easily. And I find they're awfully shallow. Yes. Kawasaki at second. It's a 9 9 game. Donaldson took a shot at the right side. Two strike heater. That was up. Another elevated fastball for a strikeout. So that sets up the matchup we've seen now for a couple of years O'Day against Bautista and it started in 2013 when Darren O'Day gets Jose with a strikeout and his retribution is a home run the next day down the left field line O'Day throws behind him Jose then overs to left field so they know one another Jose was the one who started the inning yesterday with a base hit off of a slider to center field. Slider just missed off the plate O'Day and Bautista with quite a history Bautista has hit four home runs against Darren O'Day four of his career six hits are homers Bautista's already homered this afternoon. I know in these situations pitchers want to get the guy but you do have a base open. He's got much better numbers against Edwin Encarnacion the batter on deck and he knows that. Yeah and this at bat reflects that Encarnacion on deck two for 13 against Darren O'Day. One of those hits came yesterday. A little flare in the center. Three and zero. Pitched right around it, and the base open. Bautista has been on base four times today. So Edwin and Connor will. Take the baton here. We're in the eighth. It's a nine at nine game. First pitch slider. Off the plate and Encarnacion barking at Dale Scott and you can see why 
pitch was off the plate. He was looking slider. Had a good look at it. Yeah, looked at at it. Uh, sometimes it's been a strike. Sometimes it's been a ball. That time he called it a strike. And it's O'Day off to a good start here in this at bat. Now everyone's got a he's got a battle. On. The Orioles outfielders are first in outfield assists in the majors. They've got 22 outfield assists. Delman Young in right has eight. He's second in the majors. Snyder's got four in left field and what Kawasaki's got to do. He's got to get a big secondary lead. Go on the crack of the bat. Well, they are staying down and away. But now is this the time he elevates that fastball with two strikes. He usually does. And, and it's a tough pitch for a right handed batter a guy of submarine like that you see the ball you want to swing at it, it looks good. Come up empty. Way outside. Travis Snyder looking for some direction from the bench. Two balls, two strikes. Full count. Two outs. Both runners will be moving on the pitch. Kawasaki at second. Bautista at first. It's important for Bautista to get a good jump. He's got a big lead. If there's a ground ball and possible force out of second, he can beat it. The inside spin move and Kawasaki was heads up. Yeah, you got to make sure that he goes home. The inside spin move right there. Just make sure he releases the ball. You'll still be able to get a good jump and score on a base hit. Jones stays alive. The Blue Jays won on Friday night. The Orioles won Saturday afternoon. Blue Jays hold a 7 4 advantage over Baltimore this season. Inside, he fights it off. Not off that high fastball again. Another extended at bat for a Blue Jay hitter this afternoon. Tough to guess with them right now. You just got to see that baseball. And react day can be awfully tough. O'Day against the right handers. Another foul back. Elevated that pitch. He's able to get a piece of it. Boy, Edward had a good cut at it. And see him talking to himself around home plate saying that was a good pitch to hit right there. Now you got to do it all again. Gather yourself. Stay in a good place. Sellout crowd on hand at Rogers Center. Back to back sellouts. Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon. Another 3 2 pitch. Popped up behind home. Weeders back by the screen has room and makes the catch. O'Day gets out of another eight inning jam. We'll go to the ninth. Orioles and Blue Jays knotted up at nine.
any of the Blue Jays' dads had their kids out. Russell Martin, remembering his childhood with his father, Russell Sr., who pitched into the game, is Brett Cecil. Cecil pitched one time in this series on Friday night. He picked up his fifth save against the Orioles through an inning, gave up a couple of earned runs. And Kawasaki now. stays in the game defensively at second base. He came on as a pinch runner. And we'll take over for Ryan Goins at second base. There's Kawasaki. Cecil, for the third time, the left handers are going to have to face Weeders, Davis, and Snyder here in the ninth inning. Weeders gets fooled and fouls it up the third baseline. We didn't necessarily think this would be a 9 9 game in the ninth the way it started. Baltimore took a 7 0 lead in the top of the second. But the Blue Jays bounced right back and scored six of their own. Blue Jays tied it up in the third, took the lead in the fourth, and Chris Davis made it a one run game with a home run in the fifth, and then the Orioles tied it up. In the seventh, the Blue Jays have had their chances. They haven't scored since that fourth inning. They've had their chances getting leadoff runners on, but clutch pitching by the Orioles snuffed out some rallies. Blue Jays have left seven runners on base. How about J.J. Hardy? He's one for 12 in the series, and he came up with the game tying RBI in the seventh. Weeders bounces it to short. Big hop for Reyes. Both of these teams are very similar. You know, you and I have talked about that these, this whole series. So it's power pack. There's there's home runs up and down this lineup. One swing of the bat, and the team can take a take the lead. That's why every pitch is so important. You can see emphasis on every single pitch, especially against guys like Chris Davis who can lead the yard. Cecil has owned this matchup over the years. Davis just two for 15. Ball on the strike to the first baseman. Davis home run came against Phil Coke in the fifth. He has also faced Aaron Loop, who got him to ground out, and now Brett Cecil, the lefties. And John Gibbons has emptied his bullpen now of the left-handers. For this part of the lineup. Blue Jays have Osuna and Tapera in their bullpen. Oh, that's that good curveball. Boy, that was a beauty. See how he just spins that ball off that middle finger. It's a spike curve where his index finger on that left hand is the knuckles actually on the on the ball to help him stay on top of that ball and spin it. Full count to Chris Davis one out. Just outside. The closer Zach Britton loosening up. He picked up the save in yesterday's game. Oh, and Rimel, the scheduled hitter is Travis Snyder, a left hander. And this was the situation that Buck Showalter has been waiting for. Told you there's no left handers on their bench. So he will go. And bring Nolan Reimold into the ball game to pinch hit for Travis Snyder. There has been a lot of strategizing all afternoon. 
Buck Showalter brought in Tommy Hunter in the second, trying to hold the Blue Jays at bay. He is discussing his options with John Russell, the bench coach. Nolan Rimo, who spent some time with the Blue Jays last year, got the start yesterday against Mark Burley. He finished up one for four in that game. Travis Snyder with the pivotal triple in the seventh finishes up two for four. Rimo's a very good fastball hitter. So they start him off with a breaking ball. He's up there hunting fastball. Early in the count. There's another one. We saw him hit a couple of home runs, a game winner for the Blue Jays on a fastball in the inner half last year when he was with Toronto. Brett Cecil was set, sitting out in that bullpen. He saw that. So. So throws him a couple of breaking balls. Rimmel spent 22 games with the Blue Jays last season. The peel down to first, no swing, says Lance Barrett. Remember, Russell Martin was called out on a check swing by the home plate umpire Dale Scott. Said he saw that one. That one he didn't see. It ball was in the dirt. Nice block by Martin. One more time. Curveball three in a row. You can see Martin snuff that one out. Two balls and two strikes. Pinch hitter Nolan Rimel batting for Travis Snyder. That ball gets away, but Davis will stay put at first. J.J. Hardy is on deck. He had the RBI single in the seventh. That tied it up at nine all. From 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. Now you got to make a pitch. I don't think they're going to start the runner. Not running. High for ball four. Martin gave Dale Scott a good look, but Scott felt it was upstairs. So back to back walks after one out here in the ninth. And here's their hottest hitter, although he hasn't had a good series like you said. He came into this with an 11 game hit streak, hitting 390 over that 11. And here's J.J. Hardy, a chance now against Brett Cecil. Well, Russell Martin, just to reconfirm the approach against J.J. Hardy, went to the mound for a quick visit. Davis at second, Nolan Rimel at first. First pitch strike right at the top of the zone. <laughs> well, that's a wicked breaking ball. Looks like a strike. Looks like it's going to be right there, and then it's out of the strike zone. You get a lot of swing and misses, especially off those right handers on that pitch. He needs another one right here. Trying to sneak that fastball by him. Up with the fastball, down with the curveball.
good job by Martin. Well, you call that curveball, you anticipate it's going to be in the dirt, so that gives you an advantage where you kind of cheat to get to your knees and block that curveball. You have to anticipate it, especially with two strikes. You're trying to get a swing and miss. You don't want to hang it if you're the pitcher. So you anticipate that ball down in the dirt. One and two. Same pattern, fastball upstairs. A hot afternoon. This is the first day of summer. It's also Father's Day. A sellout crowd on hand. Two and two. Bouncing ball up the middle and through. Coming around third is Chris Davis. There'll be no throw. I don't know that Reyes saw that baseball. It looked like it was a bouncing ball. It bounced on that second hop and really took off towards center. But J.J. Hardy with another big base hit. Yeah. Yeah. Last time up he singled. They're in double play depth. You can see Reyes slide to his right. It's a breaking ball. He slides to his right as the pitch is on his way and then can't recover to get that ball back through the middle. Wasn't hit that hard, just hit in a right spot. J.J. Hardy gives the Orioles the lead, his second RBI of the afternoon. Ryan Flaherty, the second baseman. The walks factor in. Chris Davis walked. He comes around to score. Rymel walked as well. He's now at second. There's a drive to the alley and right, and that's going to go all the way to the wall. Rymel's around. He's going to score. Right behind him is J.J. Hardy, and Flaherty will go into third with a two-run triple. Well, you walk guys late in a ball game against a team like the Baltimore Orioles. They're going to make you pay. Both walks now come around to score. Davis and Rymel. Hardy right behind him. Ball was up. And Flaherty has had a good series. He got hit by a pitch that really set up the ninth inning in yesterday's ball game, and now comes up with a clutch two-run triple. And Adam Jones is digging that. Jones not in the lineup with a bad shoulder. David Lowe, the infield is in. Lowe's a terrific bunner. Won't be surprised if they try to steal a run here with a bunt. Squeeze it in. You can play the suicide squeeze. You can go the safety squeeze. Lowe's been a hot hitter. Had a good rip. Ball on the strike to the center fielder. Twelve nine Orioles. Breaking ball, he gets a piece of it. Blue Jays have battled back from a seven nothing deficit and have fallen behind here in the ninth. Just have not been able to contain the Orioles. The Orioles are a good hitting team. 
A lot of professional hitters on this team. Both starters in this game lasted an inning in the third. Scott Copeland for the Blue Jays, Chris Tillman for the Orioles. Jimmy Paredes, a switch hitter, excuse me, Manny Machado was on deck, and Machado has had another two hit game. Machado's been on base three times. He's had seven hits in the three games. You know, if you're John uh, John Gibbons, you got to be thinking about uh, Brent Cecil's pitch count here in tomorrow's ball game down in Tampa Bay. I think that's why you see Ryan to pair up. The left hander at the plate this is probably his last hitter. He might need Cecil tomorrow. Breaking ball and low strikes out. Martin will throw to first to complete the strikeout. And that's it. Gibbons has come out to make the change. And you're right. More concerned about the pitch count now. Blue Jays will have a tough three game series against the Rays starting tomorrow night. Drew Hutchinson opens up against Matt Andres. The Orioles, for the second time in this series, have a big ninth inning. They scored three runs in the ninth yesterday to break it open. They've done the same here this afternoon. Cecil out to Para in. Walk two. They both come around to score. Then Ryan Flaherty hit the triple, cash in two more runs. The Orioles have scored three. There's a runner at third base and two outs. Ryan Tapera into the ball game. Eleven games this season for Tapera. Pitched yesterday, a third of name gave up a base hit, fastball slider. He's got a little bit of a split. Been throwing hard and doing well for the Blue Jays. Has allowed one earned run over his last seven outings, and he gets to face a hot hitter in Manny Machado. Machado with two hits. He's two for four with a walk this afternoon. And he drills the first pitch past Reyes into center field. Flaherty comes in to score. What a series Manny Machado has had in this series. He is eight for 13. Playing great defense. They got him in that leadoff spot and he's come up with some big hits. He faced Tapera yesterday and doubled and knocked in two big runs in the ninth inning. He not wasted any time now. First pitch. It's that bat head out for an RBI single. That closes the books on Brett Cecil. He'll be charged with four runs. Dale Scott got hit by that foul ball. Going to try to walk it off. Slider 
from Tapera. And Paredes just gets a piece of it. It's the instep of the home plate umpire. The Orioles 13 runs on 16 hits. They scored 19 runs on Tuesday against Philadelphia. And they have the same power packed punch the Blue Jays have. Is that the game they scored or they hit eight home runs? Yes. Jimmy Paredes hit a three run home run in the second inning. He's had a three hit game. Pair is the sixth relief pitcher to work this afternoon. You were off by one. <laughs> you missed one. He's the seventh reliever for the Blue Jays. And that's what happens when the starter gets knocked out early. You're trying to piece it together and you end up going through your whole bullpen. Pretty good pitch there. It's been inconsistent. Today. Yeah, it's been frustrating for Russell Martin. And you can see he and Dale Scott have had conversations all afternoon about the strike zone. Full count pitch was pulled foul by Paredes. Schultz, Coke, Hendricks, Luke, Delamar, Cecil, and now Tapera. And that's strike three call. That'll end the inning. Paredes strikes out. But the Orioles strike in the ninth. Four runs. They've taken a 13 to 9 lead. Up this series with the Orioles and then take on the Rays for a short three game road trip ending on Wednesday afternoon, off day on Thursday. Then the Texas Rangers are in town, and Texas Rangers can score some runs as well. And right after them, how about the Boston Red Sox for four? Boston has had all kinds of problems this season, but Boston has scored 12 runs today in Kansas City. Then the Tigers will follow, then the Blue Jays will go to Detroit to take on the Tigers as start of a long road trip and they've got Verlander back they get to Archer on Tuesday but first things first they get Zach Britton here in the ninth inning the closer this is not a, a save situation with a four run lead 
Justin Smoke goes after the first pitch. It's a one hopper to J.J. Hardy. One pitch, one out in the ninth. I want to remind you there's more baseball coming up right after this game. The Houston Astros will be in Seattle to take on the Mariners. Houston will send Velasquez to the mound against the former Blue Jay, Jay Happ. Seattle broke out a bit yesterday, scored six runs against Houston. They won it 6 3, and they beat up on Dallas Keuchel. When does that team turn it around? That that team, Seattle's got too much talent to be five games under 500. Yeah, they sure do. Offense has been a concern there. That's why they fired their hitting coach Howard Johnson and replaced him with Edgar Martinez. Russell Martin, two for four this afternoon. Father's Day crowd starting to thin out as the Orioles have taken the lead here in the ninth. The Orioles had a 7 nothing lead after the top of the second. The Blue Jays came back with six of their own. To their credit, they didn't shut it down. It was early. You knew that the Blue Jays were going to come back, but then late in the game, the Baltimore Orioles bullpen has been lights out. We have seen Hunter and Brock. They gave up runs, but Roe, Mattis, O'Day, nothing. Blue Jays haven't scored since the fourth inning. The two starters were knocked out in the second inning. Been a battle of the bullpens ever since. Three and two to Russell Martin. That's bounce foul outside of third. Pretty simple approach for Zach Britton, isn't it? Fastball with great sink to it, and a little bit of a breaking ball. And then as a hitter, you got to make him get that ball up. Ball four. A one out walk issued to Russell Martin, and that'll bring a pinch hitter to the plate. Carrera was the scheduled batter, but with the lefty in the game, Zach Britton, Danny Valencia will be announced as the pinch hitter. Valencia got it started yesterday afternoon against Zach Britton with a pinch hit. He had an infield single, came around to score, but that's the only run the Blue Jays could muster against Zach Britton. Valencia pinch hitting is one for nine. That was his only pinch hit base hit yesterday against Britain. Ground ball. Hardy shovels to Flaherty. This should do it. Double play ends it. So the Orioles win it 13 to 9. They take two of the three games in the series. They'll go on to take on the Red Sox while the Blue Jays will go down to Florida and play Tampa Bay in the three game series. Lots of offense in this one. 13 runs for the Orioles. 16 hits, 9 and 12 for the Blue Jays. Doesn't get any easier in the American League East. You got the Orioles at home. Now you go on the road to face Tampa Bay. You got to strap it back on tomorrow. Tampa Bay's tough. We'll be right back at it tomorrow night as the Blue Jays will start a three game series. Drew Hutchinson against Matt Andres. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Blue Jays Central. Here's Jamie Campbell and Kevin Barker.